everybody, welcome to Backish Sup Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Oh, it's time for a Redux, baby! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's right! I, I ordered a button and everything! Nightfall. Volume 1, there are three of these. Ooh, so we're doing one third. We're doing one of third of Nightfall. <laughs> well, no, because this is Nightfall. Oh, right. The next one is Night's Quest. Right. And the next one is Night's End. So what do they call the whole thing? The Nightfall Saga. Oh, okay. Yeah, Night's Quest isn't quite as iconic <laughs> and you as can't Batman say, like, Nightfall. The Night's End saga. beginning to end. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, you could. We will when we inevitably do the third episode. But mm. for now, it's the Nightfall Saga Part 1, a.k.a. Nightfall. This is weird. There's so much going on. And yet, not really. I remember as a kid reading Nightfall when it was coming out and being baffled by it because I thought I was missing something. Like, I thought I was missing a lot of context. And it turns out I was missing exactly five issues <laughs> of okay. subplot context and one Vengeance of Bane. That was it. Mm. Everything else in this is completely made up on the spot. As you may or may not know, Superman was dying around the same time as Batman's breaking. Mm -hmm. This was, according to the audience, derivative and lame. But the creators did not mean for that to coincide. In fact, if you could believe it, DC Comics was a little disjointed back then. <laughs> and had trouble communicating with itself. I mean, how many Batman titles did they have going on at the time alone? Don't ask me that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Batman, Detective Comics, Shadow of the Bat, Legends of the Dark Knight, not to mention Catwoman, Robin, and Showcase, insert year that that Showcase issue came out. <laughs> 93 in this one, so at least seven. Yeah. That's too many. Not including annuals. Oh, and people have trouble communicating, you say? Yeah, well, and that's the Bat that's office. Just yeah. But over in the Superman office, everyone was freaking out because Lois and Clark, the new adventure of Superman, is gonna eat their lunch. <laughs> and so they were like, let's just kill the bastard. Well, there's no crossover between those audiences. <laughs> people who read Superman watched the show. Oh, yeah, probably. But yeah. the people who watched the show did not read the comic books. Right. Until he died. And then everyone right. read They're like, well, that I guess one I'll see issue. what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And, I think it worked in terms of sales. But over at the Bat office, the idea was that then editor of the Bat titles, Denny O'Neill, was talking with Peter Milligan, who essentially created Barbados and also wrote a lot of Dynamite Batman comics at the time. But he had this idea for a three issue story arc <laughs> where Batman had to retire. <laughs> three issues. Three issues where Look, Batman quits. We're not gonna kill him. No, he's gonna leave the book for three issues. And O'Neill's like, no, a year. That's very different. <laughs> very different. And not the pitch. You know, right. Milligan's idea of why Bruce Wayne has to go away is not invent two whole new characters to facilitate that end and have it be all about the dangers of removing Batman's no-kill rule. I, I guess in a way, if you try and say, oh, we're gonna remove him for three days, that's like a vacation. Yes. Like, what happens if Batman goes on vacation is not that interesting. Hell no. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree, actually. Like. The three issue idea? No, like why even bother? Right. Like it's a waste of that idea. Yeah, no, and that's that's I think in keeping with the change. Mm -hmm. I think that Nightfall is like the big point of derivation between when Batman was a drop in, drop out, done in one kind of thing. Despite the fact that even Denny O'Neill during that time was instigating the graphic novel Factory yeah, with, with Legends of Dark Knight, yeah. mm -hmm. and even the idea of the story arc being pioneered, and within the pages of Batman, you'd have like these epic stories like the KG Beast and so forth. Uh, but even then, you could still, on a regular basis, just drop in and read a Batman story. Maybe there's a two or three parter. And then you drop out, you could leave for months, and then you come right back in, you miss nothing. Right. And the approach was still the same. The people who did all those things were still there. The idea of being like, oh, I want to revolutionize or alter the entire Bat mythos, but at the end of the third or second issue, it better be all back where it started. They were definitely thinking about that when they were making Nightfall. The exact same thing. We're like, we're gonna change, upset everything, but everything will go exactly where it's supposed to be at the end of it. Right. 
but it couldn't because the genie was out of the bottle. <laughs> They'd done it. They'd done what Denny O'Neill coined, and it didn't last, the mega series, a year-long story. Mm -hmm. But because of Nightfall, Batman will suffer the mega series until, forever. until now. Yeah, forever. Right. Batman will have Along to with have like most of the industry, right? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, they're realizing that the people are reading comics are like, oh, what if we actually put some stakes in there? What if there was history and continuity? Well, right. yeah, and, and, and I want to know what happens. What happened before this? So let me go buy a bunch of more books. Uh -huh. yeah. And 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 I can't get off the ride. There's <laughs> never a point. Of right. jumping off. <laughs> right, because everything just leads right into the Everything next flows thing. right into the next thing. And uh, once we solve that problem, well, Jesus Christ, another problem has already been starting in the middle of that problem. And mm. now we got to just <laughs> well, overlap and say, yeah, I can't leave. I can't not I can't know. quit now. Not when the stakes are so high. <laughs> was what this? if it was a roller coaster? Oh. Where you just can't go. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is. It's an escalator. <laughs> the battle office goes away. Danny O'Neill, like, procure some money, sends everybody up to like the Catskills, and they hash out their plan over all of those titles to tell one contiguous Batman story that facilitates Batman getting off the table. So by the time they find out, oh, they're killing Superman, we're breaking Batman, but- yeah, But I already started. But I already started. Right. I've already started writing it on the whiteboard. Superman's gonna die, we're gonna break the bat. We're just gonna have to make twice as much money, I guess, is, right. the, is the mentality. And, uh, and, and criticisms be damned. And so they start working on this and they're like, the plan is Batman's gonna get off the table and he's gonna be replaced by a mistake. And I swear, this is not a critique of image. That's coming <laughs> later, that's Kingdom Come. Right. I think it inadvertently is. I think it ends up being a critique of image. Right, like, maybe as they were writing it, they were like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me see my lunch. Tom McFarlane's like, Nope. Batman is perceived as old and busted and antiquated. He's got this no kill rule, which like the most popular superheroes don't have. The most popular superheroes of the time are Wolverine and Punisher. These guys aren't like, oh no, Batman isn't as cool as Wildcats or the Savage Dragon. That is not their thinking. They're thinking our direct competitors, Marvel, are changing everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're making their characters edgier. Yeah. and. They are making the audience look at our characters as like the old guard. Right. You know, like the old and busted, old and busted. Used to be replaced kind of characters. Yeah. And so. That's what I, you get for trunks on the outside. So let's <laughs> teach them a lesson by taking Batman away from them and replacing him with a edgier, more hardcore, no kill rule evaporated Batman. Yeah, mm -hmm. you want you want to see that? We'll show it to you. You can't, you can't stand anymore. Here you go. And so they have to invent two characters, Bane and Azrael. Uh, they work on Azrael earlier. Azrael comes out, uh, much to the disappointment of Denny O'Neill. Because <laughs> to hear Casada tell the story about like designing it, you know, Denny O'Neill had this like idea of him being this like knight with a flaming sword, and it was going to be so cool and medieval. And then Casada draws it, and Denny O'Neill's like, "He's amazing." He's like, "Yeah, that's his dad." <laughs> He dies in the first two pages. Yeah, he's he's lame. But check out Azrael, and he shows him this insane hockey gloved wearing fireman. <laughs> and Denny O'Neill went, oh. I think their plan was KG Beast was gonna be the big bad, but then the Iron Curtain fell and they went, ah, oh, shit. Right. Well, it's kind of in his name. So <laughs> they just went, well, just do that again, but with, with this new guy. Uh, that's not true. Bane is a very distinctly different character from the KG Beast, but they come out with Vengeance of the Bane and they're like, here you go. And everyone's like, oh my God. And Vengeance of the Bane is absolutely just the prelude to Nightfall. It's in the volume mm -hmm. that you can buy in the yep. comments down below. But they're like, no, you meet Bane and then Bane is ever present throughout the Batman books until Nightfall launches. Now, when I said five issues of context, the context is this. Commissioner Gordon has gotten married to Sarah Essen and she thinks Batman is bad news. Like that's, that is the theme <laughs> of the Gordon problem. What are you gonna do about this Batman thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, no. It, what are you gonna do? It's not even that. It's like, uh, it's my job. It's, I'm gonna do what I need to. Yeah. No, well, until it's got nothing do, to do with you. Sleep on the couch, Jim. It's, no, it's not even that. It's, it's, it's more frustrating and annoying than that. Where she will go, oh, Batman again? And he's like, yeah, he's really helpful. And she's like, okay, well, I don't know about that. There's a point where Gordon is going to be assassinated by a villain who nobody remembers named Headhunter. Mm -hmm. And Headhunter is literally just a British punk with a gun. Mm -hmm. Like that's, the design is 
imagine the guy with the boombox in Star Trek IV with a gun. <laughs> That's the bad guy. And Headhunter is going to kill Jim. And Jim decides, like, screw it, I'm just gonna take the fight to him. So he leaves. And Sarah is so upset that she goes to the bat signal and she calls Batman. And Batman shows up thinking Jim's there, but it's Jim's new wife. And she's like, I don't like you. What you do is you deal with like the jokers and stuff, but like the real police deal with like the real criminals. And Batman's like, I don't make a distinction. Like I, I, I fight crime. Right. I will fight the regular criminals too. Right, like yeah. just, you guys can't handle the joker. Yeah, like the penguin didn't kill my parents. Like regular crime did. I, I, I fight purse snatchers. I fight evil bureaucrats. I, I punch the joker in the face. It's all green to me. And she's like, that's not fair, and that sucks, and you are belittling my husband in his job. And he's like, I'm sorry, is there a point to all this? Like, are you are you going somewhere with this? Like, is this, because she's like- I'm sorry, is Jim here? Can I talk to Jim? Right. <laughs> it, it's, it's really weird and funny. So Jim fights the headhunter, and he almost dies. Like, he gets shot in like the head. Oh. And Batman stops the headhunter, beats his ass, and then hands him to Jim. Jim brings the headhunter to prison, and Sarah's there, she's like, oh, you did it, Jim! Like, you proved that Batman is useless! And he's like, no, Batman was integral. <laughs> I oh, would save my life. You see the blood that's pouring down my face? It's because I almost got killed by Headhunter. And then she does it again. She uses the signal. Batman shows up and she goes, thank you. Now go away. And he's like, okay. Fuck me, I guess. And I'm so, gonna give Jim a different signal that he can call me on. Yeah, and what's funny about this is that there's also another undercurrent that comes out of effing nowhere, which is Batman's fatigue. Batman is Batman. Just. I'm the knight, I'm fun and cool and hip, and I'm a little sad that my second Robin died in Ethiopia, but right. we got a new Robin and things are going well. <laughs> so it's all good. And then Alan Grant is suddenly not writing Batman anymore. And Doug mentions on Batman and suddenly Batman is tired. Tired, oh, like this. not like getting enough sleep. He's, I'm he, like Batman all the time. Yeah, like he's it's really weary. Hard. Okay. He is he is burned out. And so he's just like having fainting spells and he's just like Ugh! and I'm like what having the fainting spells? Yeah, it's just coming completely out of nowhere. He's just what if Batman that sounds was like a medical problem. Yes, and so he starts going to doctors and they're all like nothing wrong with you. You should probably go see a psychiatrist. Mm. Good thing I've invented one. Yeah, Dr. Meridian Chase. N Kind of, but it's actually Chandra Kinsolving. Is it Chase Meridian? It's Chase Meridian. Oh, son of a bitch. Tim Drake, new Robin, has a dad who was almost killed, lost his wife to a villain called the Obey Man, and he needs help. And Dr. Chandra Kinsolving is hot and awesome at what she does. And so Batman doesn't know any psychiatrist outside of like Hugo Strange to call, <laughs> and so he calls her. And immediately, this is after Alan Grant is gone, like Chandra's in, and she's like, ooh, Bruce Wayne, you're hot, and I wanna bang you, and fix you. And so you're what? Like, okay. Uh, and it's just- That's unethical. It's just completely out of nowhere. <laughs> that's fine, I won't charge him. Right, like, it's weird. I it's, won't call him a patient. No, she definitely does. Cause like he goes to her office and like they, they, they go on walks and you're just like, what, what is this? She is intrigued by his aloofness and his caginess, you know? Cause he's like, mm. oh, I'm so, uh, and she's like, why? You know, you're like billionaire He's playboy. Like a puzzle to solve. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And have sex with. Yes. Also, yeah, will she fix Batman's tiredness, or will he be tired forever? <laughs> like, oh, what? I don't want to read this. No, and it's not the Alan Grant stuff. But you're just like, oh, it notes the changing of the guard. You know, it's going from like these are the episodic, quick and dirty. Here's a little story, to it's a it's a thing. We're gonna stretch it out. Oh no, nothing was resolved. Maybe it will be next issue, but probably not. And we can then explain how Batman is easily defeated by a brand new villain. Because he's he's tired. Right. Don't don't forget. He's tired. He's burning out. Even though he just got a new Robin. And they form this partnership. And during the Alan Grant and Chuck Dixon stuff, uh, they're going great because Tim loves being Robin and Batman is he's proud got of him. For it. Yeah. And while Batman is protective of him, they are partners. And then we have the switch. And after the switch, every story they are both in is Batman going, I'm going in way with the car. <laughs> and I'm like, so you don't like Robin? 
Yeah, and I, I, I don't want to deal with it. I looked into it, and like, there's nothing on record of, you know, Mensch or anybody being like, I don't want Robin in this story, or I think Robin sucks. The things that I'm focusing on are like, why is Batman such a dick? He is so mad that Jim is breaking the bro code by listening to his new girlfriend slash wife, <laughs> and he's telling Robin to screw off, even though like we just watched them build this great, awesome partnership, and he's like burning out. What? <laughs> And then Bane's like, and now I'm here. Oh! Do you think the problem with Robin is that there hadn't been a Robin for long enough, like so long, that all the people who are thinking about writing Batman and coming up with ideas yeah. are coming up with ideas for just Batman? No. And then Robin comes along and is like, oh, well, all my pitches don't involve right. Robin because there wasn't a Robin. No, because there had been a Robin from 1941. <laughs> yeah, but it's been. It's been four years. What? No, this is 93? Yeah. There's a small window of time when there's no Robin, and even then, usually those are flashback stories about his first year or two. Mm. I wonder if they get disenfranchised with him, like, well, no, we're trying to make Batman for an older audience. If we keep tying him to this kid. Robin is selling like crazy. There's no reason for them to think Robin's a problem. For them, and I promise you, based on every interview they give, they're all thinking about how much money they're gonna make. It is not about the integrity of the character, mm. or about capturing a new audience, or about you know, recapturing a lapsed audience. They are like, if anything, some of them are actually disappointed that Robin died at all. It's mostly because they were like, why did we leave that decision up to the fans? Yeah, that was Since stupid. when have we ever asked for their opinion? Oh, well, here's another Robin. You can write all the stories you want about him. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I but, guess he could wait in the car. But it's just like harder. Yeah, I mean, like, it is. To get another character in there and yeah. figure out what he should do. Right, and it's like, I, but I have like, a Batman I idea. It's, like, it's not too far off where it's like, I have a Batman idea. Here he goes. You got to do something with Robin too. Well, but, but Batman's going to do all the things, right? So I, I guess I'll split it up. That. Yeah. And if you're going to replace Batman, Robin would be an obvious candidate. Sure. Or the other Robin. You know the the adult one, right? Who has no book? Yeah, called but then, Nightwing. Yeah, but then we're not inventing yeah, new characters. He well, has no book because he doesn't <laughs> sell, obviously. No, we. <laughs> As a matter of fact, <laughs> New Teen Titans, starring Robin, outsold Batman for a time. Wow. No, that was a problem for them too. And they were like, no. It eventually ironed itself out where <laughs> Batman did dwarf right. new Teen Titans again. Oh. Dick Grayson is just over there waiting to be used. The problem is if I did use Dick Grayson, I couldn't also make the story about Batman's no kill rule. Right, because he can't kill people. Yeah, if Dick Grayson, Dick Grayson took over as yeah. Batman, it would just work flawlessly. Right, so then I got to figure out a reason why Batman doesn't pick him, so that's like, really kind of messed up oh, and, it's and Batman's lame. even more of a dick. There is actually a <laughs> sequence in Nightfall where they talk about like why they don't pick Nightwing. I, I don't approve of you dating an alien. <laughs> you and Starfire just don't. That'd be amazing. You lost the right to the mantle as soon as you dated a dirty alien. Yeah. <laughs> you stuck your dick in the cosmos. No, it's, it's... Here's the thing. I'm fine with being friends with them. Right. Yeah. And I, you, can even, you can even have a flint. But we don't But mix. she like moved in with you. <laughs> It's like if I married Superman. It sounds like you really want to. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I can't do that, so why should you be able to? I mean, uh, all right. See you at the reunion. No, the reason Batman gives is he's his own man now. That's the whole amount of thought he gives. Right. So I guess we'll just give it to you. You're guy. here. <laughs> so we got to set that up too. So like five issues. Right. They're like, okay, um, Jean-Paul, was Asriel, we beat him, and I know his address. Robin, go to Jean Paul's house and give him like an interim costume and train him. That way I won't have to punch him if he inevitably becomes a supervillain later. The whole of how Jean Paul becomes a member of the Bat Family is Batman's like, there's a young impressionable character who almost killed me with like his insane costume. I took it away from him and I want to like, keep an eye on him in almost like a Tower of Babylon kind of way, mm. but they don't like play it up like that. It's more just Batman like just being pragmatic. No, Tim, go to Jean Paul's house. Tell him who you are and train him so that we won't have to fight him later. Even though he almost tried to kill me. Yeah, well, but he was, uh, you know, he was uh, hypnotized by a troll. You know, with a medallion. Right. So it's not really his fault. So like... So it's like, uh, keep your friends close and your enemies closer kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I was just so impressed by his skill. Yeah, the skills that he earned through a magic medallion that unearthed secret programming that he got through hypnosis. Awesome. Uh, you are secretly a badass and kick anybody's butt. I'm Jason Bourne, baby. But like, that's 
where Jean-Paul comes from. And then Tim and Jean-Paul have like this weird friendship, we, you know, where like Jean-Paul is being taught the ropes by Robin. Now, of course, Jean-Paul gets a costume that is essentially the Night Court character. Remember, you remember? Uh, oh yeah. What's his name? Oh. Night Scourge. <laughs> right. Court was his. But of course, name. his real name. Yeah, so we're right. calling him Night Court. Right. It's okay. hilarious. Night Scourge was just like some random ninja character, or at least like he was dressed like one. Yeah. So Robin is like, I'm gonna dress you like that, basically. So he puts him in a ninja costume. <laughs> but what's <laughs> even- the first thing that came to mind because he saw it recently. Ninjas are cool. Well, what's worse is it's not even Night Scourge because there's another character that was invented as like, I guess a proto Bane called Metalhead. <laughs> Metalhead sucks on toast, <laughs> but he looks almost exactly like the Jean-Paul ninja costume that Tim makes for him. And Later, someone at editorial notices. And so they blame Jean-Paul's decline into being like a psycho on the fact that his ninja costume looked kind of like Metalhead's costume. And so maybe the association with the bad guy made him think he should murder people. And I was like, what? no, don't try to explain the lack of creativity in the design of Metalhead slash Jean-Paul's interim ninja costume. But that's one of their like, let's explain that. And I'm like, what the, what the That's like saying, what is happening? A birthday clown suddenly realizes, hey, I kind of look like the Joker. I guess I'll start murdering people. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm the Joker now. <laughs> like, well, visually I look, I look like, like, like I look like evil a bad clown. guy. And so, well, I guess, well, but you see, there aren't a lot of Jean Pauls out there. This is all just like back matter. <laughs> so when, when Nightfall, the volume starts, has Batman already He's been pulled beleaguered? John Paul in? Yes, Jean Paul has now been part okay. of the inner circle. Okay. Robin has been training him. Not a lot! Right. But Bane has also been working around the scenes. And at one point, Batman's- Oh, so Bane's, Bane's in Gotham. Yeah, Bane's in Gotham. Oh, we, yeah. Well, Vengeance he was the, in Gotham at the end of well, Vengeance. Vengeance of Bane happens, and then he comes to Gotham, and he gets his inner circle, you know, Trog, Bird, Zombie, classic characters everyone loves and they use today. And uh, so they're like setting up shop in Gotham. And you know, of course the plan is I will destroy the bat because I had a dream about one. And so he's my, he's my nemesis and I got to destroy him and take over Gotham because, because Bird is from there. <laughs> like whatever. Right. And because it's my destiny. Right, uh, yeah, my destiny and I'll rule. Yeah. So that's happening. So at one point Batman's busy and he goes away and Robin is like, we need Batman to show up. And so, they put Jean Paul in a Batman costume to like keep up appearances. I vaguely remember that. That happens in this. Mm. But we lead up to that in a previous story where that happens and then Bane shows up. And Bane just like runs a train over Jean Paul. <laughs> like, and, and, right. and basically goes like, you're not Batman, meh. That's where right. Jean Paul should have gotten like, that's, uh, now I'm crazy, now I'm gonna kill people. That is one of them. Like that's right. one of the reasons. It's like I got beaten so easily, I have to like. He didn't even regard me. Like right. throughout, once Batman makes Jean-Paul into Batman, he's like, I'm gonna be fucking better than you. And everyone's like, okay, mm. that's really weird that you would immediately go to there. Right. And uh, part of the justification is- I got pants once a, and it's not happening yeah, again. I got pantsed in your pants by the guy who shattered her back and now it's personal. And it's like, shut up. But that's Jean Paul. So I'm not Jean getting my there. back broken. Yeah. <laughs> so he's pissed that Bane didn't even fight him leading right. up to Nightfall. Uh, so he's pumping iron all the time. Right. Because you, know? you know who else is pumping iron? Bane. Bane. So he's not, he's just juicing. <laughs> you know, it's a lot easier when you use drugs. Yeah. The drugs are just amazing, by the way. They make you feel good, they keep your dick big, it's great. <laughs> but uh, anyway. So that, that's another like lead up to this. And then Nightfall happens. And they're just like, yeah, that three part Peter Milligan story, we're getting all the mileage we can. We're gonna... We're gonna stretch it out for like 40 issues. Oh my God, 19 parts, I believe Nightfall is. But even then there's like a, at least a two part story that doesn't even count. At, at some point, like after Batman gets his back broken, they go, holy shit, we didn't do a Two Face story. So while Batman is on the gurney, Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, we have to wait to see if this special medicine that treats spinal injuries takes hold. Let me remind you of another story that happened during Nightfall you didn't see where Two-Face got out. 
So it's like a let's go back. Like yes, but issue. in the story we were literally reading and could mark. Oh, so I forgot this one. I know exactly just... when everything happens. When the hell did you do this Two Face story? <laughs> but in the Two Face story, Robin pulls a maneuver in the two part Two Face story where he like feels guilty about having done it poorly. And Batman was like, that was freaking reckless. You shouldn't have done it like that. In the flashback story that really didn't happen, but we're retconning that it did. <laughs> right. And then when Batman first emerges from his coma after back shattering, he goes, Robin, actually, you remember that Two-Face thing that happened like a couple weeks ago? You were totally justified. That was a good call. Looked pretty cool. What? And Robin's like, oh, hooray! And you're like, what? Why did you do that? What the hell is this? There's also in this volume and in Nightfall, there's like a two or three part scarecrow story. And it's written by Alan Grant, who just emerges from the darkness. Because he's like, he was, he's not working on Nightfall. He, he worked on everything up to Nightfall. And then he's like, bye. And then and this shows up to do a three part scarecrow story. Alan, Alan, we need help. It's like they were like, oh, please help us, help us keep the story going. And he's like, okay, uh, <laughs> here's anarchy again. And you're like, man, anarchy? God damn it. Like, and, it and, and, and it relates to scarecrow. How? Oh, it doesn't? What the crap is this? So it's just, they just put Nightfall on pause for three issues to do that. Yeah. And then, okay, now back to Nightfall. <laughs> yes! What the hell? I know. I, I'm looking through these covers, and when they get to the Scarecrow story, they stop numbering the Nightfall. <laughs> yeah. They just, it's still the Nightfall logo, uh-huh. but it doesn't have numbers anymore. And nope. then they resume the numbering after that. It goes from 16, no, it goes 16 to 17. Yep. And there's a whole three part story that's in the volume that also takes place during Nightfall, but also doesn't effing matter. Anarchy, Anarchy's the child, right? Yeah, the child, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he, he gets freed, and he's like, oh, I know. Um, Batman creates his villain, so he's a bad guy, so I gotta kill Batman now. Like, he's finally a villain to fight Batman. And then they meet up, and Batman's like, what are you doing? Knock it off. <laughs> it's just like, okay. <laughs> Nightfall. Right. Bane is like, okay, I've got my plan. He steals the blueprints to Arkham, and he's like, all right, we're gonna blow a hole at Arkham. They're gonna free themselves. They'll unleash into Gotham and they'll upset everything so that I can then like swoop in, monitor Batman and his progress, wait for him to be at his lowest point, and then break him. And I'm like, what? that doesn't really show you being a badass. That just watch, that's just you basically whittling him down until he's literally the most beatable he could possibly yeah, be. Do, do you like know what cheating. being a yeah, badass it's completely is? Cheating. That is it's, no- it's using tactics. Right, yeah. You, do you know what being a badass is? It's cheating by using performance enhancing drugs to be the, the strongest you could be, and then waiting for Batman to just uncharacteristically have burnout. Be exhausted. Yep, right. and then unleash all of his villains at the same time at him, and then wait for him to be at home in his underwear, and then just kick him in the dick. All I'm saying <laughs> is Sun Tzu would approve. Oh, right? I guess. Yeah, that's right. just smart. That's just, yeah, that's just, he's a tactician, you're right. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, but there's a great moment where like they're gonna blow open a uh, Arkham, and they're like, "Whose cell do we break open?" Oh, obviously the Joker's, and then Joker will free everybody. And it's like, yeah, because back then, uh-huh. as far as they're concerned, these writers would would trip over each other to tell a goddamn Penguin story. Right. They're like, oh, it's just they're all yeah, they're, they're all, all equal. Yeah, yeah there is no they're all colorful nemesis. characters. No, yeah. like, the Joker gets the job or the distinction of being the greatest nemesis in Nightfall, effectively because he killed Jason. That's it. Right. Joker doesn't yeah, resent not, Bane. He's, he's not, not like in love with Batman. No, no. In fact, he teams up with Scarecrow. First, he, he teams up with Cornelius Stirk, a relatively newer invention who's a cannibal. And he, he's like, oh, I need you to go kidnap Gordon, bring him to me. And Stirk is like, okay, I'll kill Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll eat him. Uh, and Joker's like, no, you wait, asshole. What? That is not what I asked you to do. It's not what we're doing. Yeah, and I'm okay, like, why did you get a cannibal in? And it's so great, because Joker's like, he's crazy. <laughs> like, what? Oh, this guy's nuts. Yeah, oh, fuck that guy. So then uh, he bumps into Scarecrow. Scarecrow's like hunting Joker, and when he finally does, he's like, we should team up. And then they do. And what they do is Scarecrow has a great idea, and I guess Scarecrow just has confidence problems. Because he's like, we should kidnap the mayor, and then you and I will make the mayor make prank phone calls that will throw the city into chaos. And they do. And they do it by using the Scarecrow's fear toxin to frighten the mayor into doing it. Even though all they need is for Joker to be like, if you don't, I'll shoot you in the face with my gun, which is what I do in all my things. 
But anyway. Or I'll melt your face with acid. Or I'll melt it with flower. acid. Yeah. Or I'll beat you down with a crowbar. <laughs> what do you think came first? The idea for Bane, and then they were like, what would he do? I know, he could release all the rogues. Or was there like a pl an idea like, what would happen if Batman had to fight all of them at yeah, once? Yeah. And then it's just like, Bane was a character that we like used for that and we put it in I think Nightfall. because we can like attribute a lot of these ideas, like the fact that we know Peter Milligan had a three act Batman retires story, mm. we would probably know that like some genius in the bullpen had the idea for an Arkham breakout story mm -hmm. and someone else had an idea for like Bane taking over Gotham and then they merged them. Right. But like it never comes up. So mm -hmm. my guess is it all comes at the same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a story in a drawer somewhere marked 1991 <laughs> that says Arkham breakout. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But that's as far as it goes. And I think it's actually kind of brilliant because it also, it thematically stacks all of Batman's villains against Bane. It shows you these are all of Bat, this is essentially like a, an ushering of the age. We're moving into like the next mm -hmm. age of Batman. Look at what came before. Yeah. All of Batman's rogues. Creates like a even bright the new line ones. Yeah. between past and present. Right, like this is what Batman was. Right. This is what Batman this is. This is new hotness. Yeah, this yeah. is Bane, new characters. So I feel like today they would definitely would have been on a story where Bane beats all of Batman's villains yes. to prove his superiority and then beats Batman. Right, right. He, the only thing he does in this is he beats Killer Croc and breaks his arms because he's technically the strongest Batman villain. I mean, that's impressive. Which is impressive and he does Because you're used that. to thinking of Killer Croc as like the most like physically yeah. intimidating. Well, and Killer Croc is also a relatively new invention as well around this time. Oh, really? Yeah, you'd think he's hmm. like been around for 50 years, but no. Hmm. But uh, Killer Croc is also pissed because Bane humiliated him and broke his arms. Right. So he, he looks for a rematch as well. I, I'd be pissed at that too. Yeah. But uh, he also is unrelated to the Arkham plot, which is also kind of brilliant because, you know, you're like, yeah, okay. Uh, they all come from here. And then each issue is Batman tries to take down one of the villains until it all like ladders to Bane. But Killer Croc also has a chapter in this and he's not related is to it, the Arkham break. Is it him just being like, I'm stuck at home because <laughs> my arms are broken. <laughs> he has casts, but he lives in the sewer, so he's just like, ah, <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of sad. I have to keep my casts dry and I live in a sewer, it's oh, really hard. It's just not gonna happen. And then it's sad because he- They're filthy. Because uh, Robin tries to tail Bane by chasing Bird and then ends up captured by Bane and then taken to the sewers where Bane wants to interrogate Robin because he's like, I didn't know about Robin. You know, like I got the I got the short version of Batman. I didn't hear about Robins and stuff. Like, this is weird. Like this is a weird thing. Like I I I I understand Batman as like a creature of the night, but then I find out like in Vengeance of Bane, he doesn't kill people. Like why? And then I find out he like enlists children in his war. That's <laughs> like weird too. Like he's on the too. third one. It's right. like a pattern. Like I, he he doesn't even know about like the lineage. <laughs> he's just kind of like. This is this only complicates my mental idea of Batman. Like, it's not going to take me off course, though. I no. still have a plan. No, and yeah, I'm going to execute. But, it. I, but I'm just I'm curious. It's I'm just weird. I'm just naturally curious by nature. So he oh, like a cat. Exactly. That's why they call you Whiskers. <laughs> That's why they call Bane Whiskers. So Bane like ch seeks to ask Robin more information, and Robin just like does his Robin thing. Like he insults him and tries to free himself, and then Killer Croc is there because he's in the sewer. And then Bane and Killer Croc fight, and Bane kicks Killer Croc's ass yet again. <laughs> and I love it because there's actually a great anecdote about the covers in these stories. Mm. Because you might notice that like the covers are actually a little more iconic and interpretive than they had been. Again, another like clear line between what was and what is and what will be. Because the previous stories are like a big panel from the book. Like here's here's the villain that's introduced in the story and they're fighting Batman. Or like, uh oh, it's Maxi Zeus, he's back and he's fighting Batman. And it's just Yeah, you, know, you were going to see this in the book. Yes. And these are more like interpretive, you know, like Scarecrow and Joker are working together. So here's Batman with Joker and Scarecrow, but like in an insane depiction. <laughs> and so Kelly Jones was the one who, who did a lot of these covers and he was like we didn't know what was happening from like one issue to the next. Like I didn't, <laughs> So I just had to draw something. They were like, I think he's in the sewers in the one you're drawing next. So just draw me a cool picture of Batman in the sewers. I'm Batman sorry. with rats on him. Yep. And I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. But that's not what happens. <laughs> this is even was in he, the book. The rats represent crime. Right. <laughs> the, the rats I mean, are trying to survive. It's maybe just, it happens in between the panels. Sure. No. It's just a lie. 
But I love that like that gave Kelly Jones a lot of freedom mm. to just kind of like draw something dope. It does look cool. It does, and it's like that is that sh that's how it should be. Let the artist just get a vague idea of what the story is, and then artistically interpret that in a dope single visual. So are you saying that the cover is a lie was invented by this? I mean, no, <laughs> because I've seen lying covers before 1993, right. but I would say that the uh, kind of cavalier approach, like the, the ubiquitous. Like you could draw whatever mm. you want, so long as it's thematically related. Exactly, like stay within the lane of the theme of the story, but you can lie, go for it. Right. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's just an insane image. Of, that's just Sam Keith drawing Batman the way he's always wanted to draw Batman. Right. That's not in any way about Riddler. <laughs> Riddler's story is hilarious. I will cover the Riddler story now. Okay. <laughs> Rid oh, this is issue eight. Yeah, but, no, but Nightfall. He actually shows up earlier before oh. Nightfall because the la the last time we saw Riddler. He was trying to summon the demon Barbados. Oh right! Oh, that was, I forgot about that. Literally, we, like Peter Milligan does that story, and the next time we see Riddler, Bane goes. So Riddler, I got an idea. Let's shoot Riddler with venom, and get him all roided out, and then see what happens. And so they do. The story <laughs> is mwah, called Riddle the Riddler. Bite me. <laughs> Riddle him with with uh, with, with venom and venom? then bullets. Because they unleash Riddler and he's got like a twenty four to forty eight hour strain of venom. So he's just like Rah! and so he just beats the shit out of Batman and he's got like these insane ideas for riddles and, and, and problems. He's like, I'm gonna release like a biotoxin into the reservoir and it's in this like water soluble bag that when the tide rises it'll hit the bag. It's like a ticking <laughs> clock. Anyway, Batman fights Riddler like, toe to toe. And Batman's like, what the crap? And it, it, all of it is so that Batman will be told by Bane that like a Venom-related antagonist is looming. You know what I mean? Like he'll right, he'll find out about clue. the Venom, and that'll be his clue that like I'm coming. Right. And it's like, okay, so it's so so buttons. It has nothing to do with it. It's just to show another Riddler story. So Riddler, he, he's roided out. He fights Batman, and then Bane's people show up, and they're like, ah, fuck it. And then they just shoot Riddler with a Tommy gun. <laughs> But because they'll roid it out, you know, it doesn't penetrate and kill him. Oh, okay. It just hurts him a lot. Right. And so Riddler goes away. And then he comes back. And Riddler has like a sling. And I'll tell you now he's been through the ringer. Because uh, he has an like arm and a sling. Right. And Riddler in his story. Hey, at least he didn't lose it. I was going to say, at least he still has an arm. It's true. And in modern DC, you know, like post 2000, he would have absolutely lost that arm. <laughs> so Riddler has this plot. And the plot is he's come up with a great scheme. But he needs to warn everyone about the scheme via riddles that he mails to respective locations, like the police department and the, the TV station and stuff. Right. But because Nightfall is happening, no one cares. <laughs> you know? Wait, like, internally no one cares? Like, or? in the world of Gotham. Right, it's like they don't have time for They don't it. have like, time. The city's like, on like, fire all for all these. people are, like, released. There's yeah. a literal scene where a cop is going through the mail and he's about to read the riddle, but he's called away <laughs> because the built the city's on fire. <laughs> and so he, he leaves it there. And Riddler's like, it's been like three days and no one gives a shit about my riddles. And so his crew kicks him out and does the caper without him. What? Yeah. Like they lost respect for him yes. because his riddles were not uncovered? That's right. I'm sorry, what was the caper supposed to be? Oh, it's just like rob a post office and take their take their money. Right. He's like, no, no, we can't, we can't rob it yet. No. We have to wait for the police to read the riddle. Yes. So that they can come close to catching us. <laughs> yes. And there like, has to be at least a chance that they could find it. Yeah. Right. And so... Uh, they, yeah, no, we're just going to go rob yes, it. I want the money. They try to shoot him and he runs away. Oh, my and God. And then they go and do it. And they pull off the caper. And when they do, they're like, <laughs> I can't believe... If, if Riddler wasn't crazy, he'd be really good at this. We should share some of our money with him. We feel so bad about it. What? Like, because he's so pathetic. <laughs> and they're like, nah. You know, so like, henchmen are feeling bad yeah. for the Riddler. <laughs> he's so oh, lame. God. Rock bottom for the Riddler. Totally. Now, Riddler does, his story ties up because there is a character invented for this story. The, his backstory is he worked for Arkham and then left and wrote a book. It's a pop psych grift called I'm Sane and So Are You. He is essentially the joke from Die Hard, where <laughs> they're talking about like, 
Helsinki syndrome and stuff, and like how we're seeing the antithesis of that in the actual hostage situation. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. So this dude is Dr. Simpson Flanders. What? And I'm like, why didn't you call him Dr. X-Files Millennium? <laughs> as long as we're hitting these phenomena at the height of their popularity. Again, by the way, like there's also like Doug Mensch again. Um, psychiatrists are quacks and they're not uh, trusted. <laughs> right, yeah. But, I mean, that was common in that time. Yeah, right? in the entertainment in the 90s, world, absolutely. Yeah. So he's, he's doing the, the, the talk show circuit, hawking the book. And so all of the, the chapters of Nightfall up to a point are punctuated by Simpson Flanders being like, hey, um, you know, all of it is outlined in my book. I'm saying and so are you. And so, and, and basically it's like, you know, these people are troubled and they need our uh, our sympathy and our help. And even though like they're shooting you or setting fire to our city, like we have to be like understanding and- uh, Yeah, we gotta be patient. We gotta be patient with them. And every time that one of those interviews concludes, the interviewer like looks at the camera and says something like, you're saying we're supposed to be nice to the Joker? You know, it's just like, uh, okay, yeah. and that's the joke. And so anyway, he's on the he's on the circuit, and then Riddler is in the audience for one of these tapings. Huh. And he's like, hey, asshole, remember me? And he's like, oh, hey, Eddie, what's going on? He's like, I've got, like, dynamite and a detonator. I've rigged this entire place to blow. Oh. And I'm, I'm gonna blow this place sky high. I'm sorry, you're gonna what do you say about that? Us? Yeah, fuck it, because I, I couldn't get any lower. My life right. is a joke. But I'm sane, right? right. So are you. Well, and he says, like, the, 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 it's actually a great shot of the Riddler, like, looking up and looking crazier than ever. And he says, I'm not sane. Huh. And I never will be. And you're just like, yeah, that's fair. Uh, so then Robin leaps out and he shoots Riddler's hand on the buzzer with, like, an epoxy that, like, freezes ah, it. Okay. okay. And then... Uh, Bullock Smart. and his men spring into action. And it's great because uh, Bullock is like, that was really reckless, Robin. Mm. Like, Batman would not have risked it like that. Oh. And like, you need to learn to be better because like, Batman's slowing down and we need all the help <laughs> we can get. And uh, and then they find out that the dynamite is actually just wood. He oh couldn't even God. get ex explosives. <laughs> uh, so where's Batman while that's happening? He's dealing with Firefly. Yeah. I keep seeing this guy with the with the flamethrower, and I'm like, who is this? Oh my god, the, here's the firefly. It crosses plot. multiple issues. It I crosses know. through the, the poison ivy yeah, issue. Yeah, the poison ivy, okay, poison ivy story. Uh, she has captured a bunch of captains of industry. She's poisoned them. She's made them into zombies. She's gonna, uh, she goes to like a party where rich aristocrats like Bruce Wayne are gonna be. Bruce really doesn't want to go, but he goes anyway. And you know, the, the poison ivy plot happens, and then all the men are, because there's no cops. Like all the cops are everywhere, so like, Nobody shows up to stop her. So then she like puts everybody into a van and brings them to her like botanical garden. And she's like, I'm gonna kiss everybody, I'm gonna kill them, and I'm gonna take their money. And then Bruce Wayne puts on his Batman costume and like punches her in the face. So like that's that story, right? But Firefly is setting fire to random places like bowling alleys and schools and zoos. Oh. And she's like, I haven't set fire to one of those before. No, it's, it's, there's a reason for it, and you're like, who oh. cares why? I'm going alphabetically. It's 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 a. Uh, Batman and Robin are trying to like deal with these problems and Batman's basically like, we'll do it systematically. Like, I'll just go, like whoever comes up on the scanner first, we go there, we kick his ass, we leave him for the police and we move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, if shit's going down I, and it's being crazy, yeah, it's not a bad plan. It, it, it's not a plan at all. It's just reactive, but that's what concept. we can do. Exactly, it's 12% of a plan. So, <laughs> Look, I'm running on two hours of sleep, all right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm exhausted. Plus I was already tired. Yeah. Remember how tired I can was? Can you see my five o'clock shadow? I'm tired, Robin. <laughs> Remember how tired I was five issues ago? Why don't you get some goddamn sleep? He does, he There's keeps two sleeping. Of us now. No, I'm never so tired, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> there are moments where he just sleeps for eight hours and then like gets up and he's just like, I'm back. And he's not like he's any not better. Like he's just like, oh, there, it's all fixed. No, he's just like, ugh. Like he's just, Bleh, I barely made it. And now I gotta get all the, and, 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 and Maybe he has sleep apnea. He's gotta get a CPAP. <laughs> Can you imagine? His sleep isn't restorative. <laughs> and Bane shows up to kill him and he's like, oh. <laughs> He has a mask too. You want to know I can why? relate. You don't want to know why I wear a mask? <laughs> because I have a deviated septum. <laughs> oh, because Doug Bench is writing it, obviously Batman's like, uh, we gotta, like, I'll let you sit in the car, but that's only so that you can be by it when I go solve the problem. And then Robin's like, dude, like, there's two of us. Let me do one thing. Meanwhile, where the fuck is Nightwing? But, like, what? and he shows up for, like, two panels. Oh. After Batman's already broken. <laughs> 
And you're like, what? Johnny come lately over here. I know. And then he leaves. And I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> going back to my life. You girlfriend. got no book. <laughs> Robin is like, let me at least like research Firefly and like come up with a lead mm-hmm. on him. And Batman's like, fine. So Robin looks up Firefly's history, finds out that he was like an orphan, goes to the orphanage, finds like a magic nun, and she tells him about his secret sister that no one knew about. Oh, thank God, I thought you actually meant a magic nun. Well, she, okay, so she's there and she has no face because she's silhouetted. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when Robin like turns his back, she disappears, like she was never there, but it never comes up again. It's not like it's some like dangling plot thread, like she's a ghost or their mom or gonna help Batman. She's just, it's just like, what the fuck is that? Like out of nowhere, we do like mystic nun stuff. But <laughs> go into the bin of ideas that were thrown away <laughs> and dig them out. Yep. And You're stick on them part in this 14. Book. Yeah. Do something for part 14. This is an opportunity for us to use all those like crap stories. Yeah. And just, just empty the bin. Yeah. Because it's just like, oh, I mean, Gotham's just going crazy. Like anything could happen yeah. because of all the, you know, they were all released at once. Right. So, and we have a ready excuse for why Batman can't handle this like easily handleable problem <laughs> no. this time. Right. And, and so Robin finds out that the, that the brother and sister combo. They were going to be adopted by some family or a bunch of families. And each time that they were, the families would tell them about what they're going to do as a family and all the wonderful places they'll go as a family. But then once they find out that, like, Firefly is a pyromaniac asshole, they, like, just disappeared and never adopted them. And so uh, Firefly is burning down all the places that his never adopted parents promised he would go to when he was a kid. And you're like, okay... And so that's what he's doing. And eventually Batman Oh, that just, sucks. It sucks. And I'm like, three issues or more? Pass. So eventually Batman just wears more layers. He's not just burning down the people who didn't like adopt him? No, he's burning down like the bowling alley. They the told zoo. me they would take me to get ice cream, so I'm burning down the ice cream place. Yeah, yeah, that exact thing. So it, uh, the, 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 the final Ugh. confrontation's at the zoo. Uh, Batman fights him at the zoo. And then- uh, I thank God they didn't burn that down. I know. Well, it's really sad, because like there's- It'd be a, very sad, but also smells delicious. Oh, no. <laughs> so Batman's like fighting a leopard, like a leopard jumps on him, and like, and Firefly's like, well, I, I prefer to burn you, but I guess a leopard eating you is just as fine. Then he leaves, and then Batman beats him, and then like dangles him over an alligator pit, and he's like, this is so cruel, why would you do this? And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> no one cares. You're insipid, I hate you. <laughs> So then that's the end of the Firefly story. You're like, what the fuck? Uh. But I mean, so when you're reading it, like, you know, issue to issue, it's like, okay, yeah. Like each like each issue, you never know what you're gonna get. And it's like the most, the highest stakes you could possibly imagine. You know, like there's a whole, there's a whole ventriloquist subplot that runs through the whole damn thing where a ventriloquist gets out and he doesn't have Scarface. Yeah, I saw a sock. Yeah, yeah. you got a sock. So, he, so as, like literally in the courtyard outside of Arkham, he takes a minute while the villains are running past him, he takes his shoe off, takes a sock out, puts it on his hand, now it's Socko. And Socko is like, what do you need? And he's like, we need to go find Scarface. So Socko and the ventriloquist team up. <laughs> we need to replace you immediately. Yes, Socko. and Sako's like, okay. So then they go to a toy store, but uh, Sako, <laughs> Sako has plans, don't worry. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Remember, the ventriloquist oh, is not God. in charge here. But uh, while they're talking, Amygdala shows up, a recent invention for Shadow of the Bat, and Amygdala's just, the, the Hulk, like big guy, small brain. Uh. Whatever. And so Amygdala is like, I uh, am lonely and I need my medicine. Will you help me? And Ventriloquist is like, I can use you. You're a puppet, essentially. Mm. So then uh, Ventriloquist and Amygdala go to a toy store. And because he's like, I don't know where Scarface is. And Sacco's giving me nothing. So <laughs> when he goes to the toy store, he grabs all the puppets. And he asks each puppet where Scarface is. And like, so we've got like a little, little uh, Bobby character, a little Mickey Mouse derivative, and like a, a, a duck. And they're all like, I don't know. You know, and it's like, what the hell? And Batman shows up and he goes, oh, thank God. It's just a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on, get in the car. <laughs> and then I can do with this. And then Amygdala shows up and he has to fight somebody. Mm. And he does. And, uh, you know, eventually he beats Amygdala. Ventriloquist gets away. He takes a couple of the puppets with him. Uh, they eventually ask enough questions where somebody, Ventriloquist flags down his defense attorney. And he interrogates the defense attorney under the penalty of death and asks him where Scarface is. And the, 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 the lawyer's like, I don't know, in like police impound probably? <laughs> so they go to police impound where they get Scarface. And then in like a hotel room or like a hostel, it's like this kind of like really seedy no tell motel kind of thing. Ventriloquist is with Scarface and Sacco. And Sacco 
is jealous of Scarface. He's like, you, I've been running this joint for the better part of a week now, <laughs> and Ventriloquist doesn't need you, and Scarface is like, well, I run this joint, and they both have guns, oh and then God. they shoot each other. So his hands are blown apart by himself, and then that's the end of the Ventriloquist story, and I'm like, that is the perfect end to the Ventriloquist character. Right. Like, just end it there. It's funny and weird, and it's totally in keeping with his character. He he <laughs> has a fight with himself between two derivative puppet personalities, oh, no. and they shoot each other. That's funny as hell. Sako is dead, and, like, the, the, the sock is full of blood. Scarface is like, Argh! like, he's got bullets in him, like, he's yeah. been assassinated. <laughs> and Ventriloquist is also, like, you know, dying of blood loss. And you're like, yeah! Yep. Don't do any more Ventriloquist stories. Done. We're done with You'll that. Never top and, that. like, he does come back from that. And in fact, before yeah. this, there was like an unforgivably long, I want to say three part, Scarface story. <laughs> and I'm like, no. That ventriloquist part you just talked about where he shoots himself in the hands? Yeah, that wraps that's, up that's after. Right after Batman's back is broken. Like, well, we got to wrap up these plot threads, you know? <laughs> well, Batman can't stop him, so he yeah. just stop himself. Yeah. Well, otherwise, Sean Paul would have killed him. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How do we explain why he isn't dead? <laughs> well, oh, he takes himself off the table. Exactly. Thank you. Almost, almost as if he knows <laughs> that this sucks. Well, no, if he knows that, that like, oh shit, Batman, Batman's, Batman's off the table. Uh oh. That means the police might actually. That means me. someone's gonna kill me. <laughs> I gotta stop. I gotta come up with a, like an in my like psychosis reason to stop. When they were pitching Nightfall and developing it, they told the brass upstairs so the idea is Batman will be defeated and you won't know if he's alive or dead and he's gonna be out of the books for a year there's gonna be a whole year of no Bruce Wayne mm -hmm. right and they're like sure whatever fine we're living high off the friggin we, we, Superman money we're yeah good. we did a year without Superman, without Superman or not yeah, a year whatever, whatever, yeah whatever whatever barely and so <laughs> they, they were doing that all the way up until someone at Warner Brothers heard about it and came in and was like, hey, so I know you're like literally writing it and drawing it now. Bruce Wayne can't leave the book. <laughs> and they're like, that completely screws up everything. Like they were like, we, they gave them so much grace where they were like, we are right, at the, we are right up to the line, but, that's the, but before that line, we can change everything. But Bruce Wayne is going away for a year. <laughs> and the readers won't know what happened to him. And they were like, okay, I don't care. Why do you keep telling me? <laughs> and then right before, right after, they were like, all right, cool. Hey, wasn't that deadline about Bruce Wayne not being in the books happening soon? Yeah, it's over. Oh, well, hey, guess what? Put him in the books. He has to be in the books. No one will read it if Bruce Wayne's not in the book. What? And so they <laughs> did. And the, and, and so wait, they, wait, wait, Batman, you want to have Batman not be in the book? What are you, insane? Right? And so they came up with this awful <laughs> subplot after Batman is broken and Bruce Wayne is an invalid. And you're just kind of like, what? And I remember as a kid being like, oh, I wish he just wasn't here. <laughs> like, it really seems like he shouldn't even be here. Because like, the last thing I want to see in any Batman book is Bruce Wayne a lot or in a robe. And it's like he's in a robe through 90% of this book. Right. But especially after his back's broken. Now, of course, you in know. In a robe, on the couch, getting high. <laughs> It's a different kind of Batman book. So obviously, you know, Bane's the undercurrent. You know, each each issue, Batman beats another villain. Da, 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 da. And meanwhile, yeah. Bane and, and, rubbing his hands together. Or we're going like, oh yeah, that's looking good. And you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's looking good. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, all right, Bane, what the fuck? And his team. Why do you think I wear this mask? To, to hide your shame? Oh, I'm a gimp. Ah, you know that, that that tracks. But his team is like, yeah. So like, they're all like, yeah, Bane, you're the greatest. Yeah, and then like. Like a third through nightfall, they go, "Hey, um, what, what is, what is, what do you, wh why are you doing this? Like, who cares?" Mm -hmm. And at one point, like Trog tries to kill Batman. It's it's right before uh, Bane gets to him. There's like mm. a gaunt Bane's like, "You're going to go through what I call the gauntlet," <laughs> and it's like, and the gauntlet, it's like this is a, this all has been the gauntlet. Right. Yeah. No, that I kept was the pre gauntlet. That was a gauntlet. That was the gauntlet. And then you show up at the end of it. That's, but he's like, no, but you got to fight Zombie and Trog and Bird. You, you got to fight the mid level bosses. Yeah. And I'm like, Bird shouldn't give Batman any trouble at all. His power no. is he has a bird. Is he owns a bird. <laughs> That's it. 
But uh, of course, Batman is pushed beyond exhaustion. Now, right. there is another subplot. Mayor Kroll, previously unestablished, new mm -hmm. mayor, but uh, Mayor Kroll, he, mm, he does not like Batman. The current mayor? The, the mayor in this, yeah. He does not like Batman. And he's like, Gordon, you gotta get, like once Arkham is blown open and all the villains pill, spill out, right. Mayor Kroll's like, hey Gordon, I'm gonna need this wrapped up in the next 24 hours. <laughs> or it's a job. And I'm like, <laughs> like you uh, must not be from here. My niece, uh, Essen, uh, told me <laughs> that uh, apparently you're soft on him or something. Right, exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Sarah is also like, no. Like Batman, boo! And I'm like, you need God. Batman right now. Yeah. But, uh, well, Gotham PD can't even deal with one at of these any given moment from from Arkham, let oh, alone no. all of them. Oh no, they can't. They are so impotent in this story. They're just like they're just running around chasing their tails. Bullock's like, I don't know. And so Kroll is like, you got to deal with this. And then at one point, uh, obviously, you know, Scarecrow and Joker team up. J Joker plays his hand where he's like, all right, my plan is, I'm going to, like, he steals like a stinger missile. And he and Scarecrow cave in like two ends of like the, the Lincoln Tunnel. Uh -huh. And they keep the mayor in there and uh, and eventually Batman gets in there, you know? And, right. But it's not like part of it, you know? Like ba Joker doesn't give a shit. Like he's like, well, once you kill Batman, then we'll own Gotham. But I'm like, right. what? And, and to, to kill Batman, I'll team up with the most formidable enemy of his besides myself, the, <laughs> the Scarecrow. No, no, he's like, I'll just work with Scarecrow. Sure, you know what? I've never done that before. Let's right. try it. Hey, Scarecrow, do you uh, you want to team up? You want to do a team up? No, Scarecrow calls ideas him. To no, Scarecrow's Batman? the one who's like, no, we gotta. Really? Yeah, Scarecrow's the one who's like, we gotta, we gotta team up. We both wear hats. <laughs> we're we're two we're of both the most thin. iconic of Batman's rogues. I yeah, guess. I guess. And You're so, funny. I'm scary. There's a correlation We're both here. Scary, we both funny. use We're gas both scary. and stuff. Yeah, we both have gas. Batman gets like a face full of scarecrow toxin. Oh boy. In the previous stories established, uh, scarecrow's toxins are like theme based. You know, like you could get one that's called that's called arachnophobia. So you'll be covered. He in can spiders. give you specifically spider fear. Yes. Interesting. That's not bad. Right, but the one he uses specifically is your greatest fear. So nice. it shows you. So like for 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 Mayor Kroll, it's cobras. Oh no, it's cobras. <laughs> My biggest fear is cobras. And like literally, Joker would just be like, <sighs> and he's like, ah, and it's like that's it. And you're like that sucks. How pedestrian. I know. No one's impressed, but no one also makes fun of him. No one's like, wow, cobras. Do you know how rare they are here? <laughs> That doesn't that's convenient. Make sense to be scared of. Why them. would you be afraid of them? I'm terrified of baskets. Yeah. They might hide cobras. <laughs> So Batman's greatest fear is losing Jason. Yeah, he already did. Right, but he's reliving it. Yeah, well that's horrible. So once he sees Jason being killed, he just, he one shot Scarecrow. Scarecrow's down. Mm -hmm. Scarecrow's like, I've never been hit that hard in my life. <laughs> he's like, boy, that uh, your greatest fear of toxin really What's backfired Oh, it's great, no. Maybe he get... don't give it to the world's greatest detective <laughs> he beats and fighter. The, he beats the shit out of Scarecrow. Scarecrow's like, Joker, run! <laughs> <laughs> I gave him his oh. greatest fear, and it only made him really mad. Joker, it's really bad. <laughs> it's real bad. You gotta get out of here, man. I and fucked then, up. I fucked up real and bad. And then just like, fear bros for life. And, <laughs> and literally, Joker's like, huh? <laughs> that bit's on him. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally shaking a rattle in the mayor's face. He's like, oh, rich. While Batman oh. grabs him. <laughs> He's like, ooh, cobras. And then Batman just grabs him. What's the rattlesnakes, you asshole? <laughs> <laughs> That's not even the right snake. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, you're still afraid. You suck. You, 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 this isn't even working on you, is it? You're just making it up. But uh, yeah, so Batman just beats Joker savagely while yelling Jason's name. And it's it's kind of fun because Jim- Very therapeutic. Yeah, well, J Jason, Jim Aparo drew the death of Jason Todd and this issue. So it's like, oh man, we're going full circle. That's kind of fun in its own way, I guess. Well, I don't know. It's pretty mm -hmm. accurate. You know, like we get full- It's what we wanted to see at that time. Yeah. So, you know, Batman just beats him and it's like, it's the most like visceral Batman Joker fight you've ever seen. Joker doesn't throw a single punch. Batman just beats him savagely. Yeah. And then Joker's like, he's gonna kill me. Shoot the stinger missile, fill him the fucking tunnel. Like we gotta go. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like he, he took it so personally. <laughs> it's like, you killed, you killed Robin. Like Joker cared more about Batman and their like never ending battle like, in 89. Yeah. And now he's just like, I, I thought we were over that. 
1993, man. Who cares? Hey, move on. He's dead. You're not getting him back. Yeah, at one point, Joker even remarks about how he's like, I, I don't care about Batman. Like, one time I killed his partner, although he seems to be back for some reason. And it's like, you, you don't really think that that's the same person, do you? <laughs> what are you talking about? He's wearing oh, the same costume. Well, it, he's not. <laughs> it's not even the same costume. What are you talking about? It's red and it's green and it's yellow. Well, is, do you have like horrible nearsightedness or something? <laughs> I mean, he's you got see the, shapes and colors? Yeah, he calls them the same thing. Oh, I'm insane. Right. What do you want? Except you're straight up not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, Batman saves Kroll in like a spectacular sequence where like, you know, the tunnel's filling up. Joker and Scarecrow just somehow get away. Uh, meanwhile, Batman's like, oh no, we're drowning. And I'm like, uh, where the hell did they go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. after being beaten savagely. Yeah, they're just like, oh, let's go through the secret tunnel that Batman doesn't know about. Like, what? So you've got One to guide us teams. to the escape tunnels. Right. And that's just... So and Batman so should be like does. right up their ass. Like, yeah. yeah, me too. But uh, yeah, so Batman saves Krull. And it's a, a spectacular sequence. You know, you like, at one point, you know, Batman like, they get to like a, like a hatch and Batman's like, okay, I found a, I found a tunnel we can go through. Um, how long can you hold your breath? And <laughs> yeah. Krull's like, so I- have to swim up the uh, river. Yeah. Not at all. Right. <laughs> Krull is just like, I can barely like stay awake. And so Batman just knocks him out and then puts him in his cape and then just like holds a little bit of air in there and just takes him out. Oh He's my like, God. he goes, I mean, the worst case scenario is he just never wakes up. Like, if I fail, right. he, he'll never know. He won't know the horror of drowning, at least. <laughs> That's right. So he Yikes. saves him, and then he drops him off, and the, 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 the police recover the mayor, and he's like, uh, he's like the biggest Batman fan in the world. <laughs> he's just like, he... Oh, I was personally saved by him? Oh, he's, he's, he's okay, I guess. He's literally like... He I guess would, I was wrong. He just, he's like, he would never give up. Like, he wouldn't give up, and, he, uh, like, and I don't like him, and he knows that, and he fucking saved me anyway. Right. Like, I am traumatized by his heroism. <laughs> And then, what's great is, Kroll is like, I am all in on Batman. And then Batman gets his effing back broken. So the next Batman is Jean-Paul. And so when Jean-Paul goes to fight Bane, like, you know, uh, there's another character, Lieutenant Kitsch. And Lieutenant Kitsch is, like, very recently established, and he, like, lasts a long time for some reason. And uh, he's just like, yeah, I don't know if I like Batman or whatever. It's just kind of like, oh, we can just give people's names, who cares? And, uh, but Kitsch is like, yeah, what's up? Mayor Kroll calls him in his office. And he's like, whatever Batman needs to do, just leave him alone. <laughs> just do whatever, let, just let Batman do whatever he wants to do. Right. I, I, I didn't understand, and now I do. But it's like, but it's the wrong Batman. But it's not even the right Batman. This guy has, like, razor-sharp gauntlets that fire shurikens at, like, a <laughs> bullet speed. And, and actually, it's really poetic because Batman saves Kroll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After beating some therapy into the Joker. <laughs> and then that's when we get to the gauntlet. Right. That's when Bane's people show up and they're right. like, all right, now yeah. you gotta fight Trog. <laughs> He faces his most formidable opponent from like history. Yes. And now the new Hotness. blood yeah. is uh, is threatening him, and, right. and they are much less less formidable. Oh my god! But, but then Bane is even more. Oh formidable. So yeah, it's, it's like, like whoa. Whoa. it's like a roller coaster. Yeah. So yeah, Batman like gets his ass kicked by them, but eventually beats them. Like right. he does actually beat them. But uh, but right, Trog like, is like yeah, I don't understand. Beat bird. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Zombie is defeated. Because he, he takes off his cape and cowl and he throws it at Zombie. So the zombie thinks Batman's jumping on him. And he sneaks up behind him and he pulls his legs out from under him. <laughs> he just pulls and Zombie just hits his face. face. And because he's 65 years old, he's out. And he breaks his neck and he's dead. He just broke his chin. He's like, he just doesn't get up. He's like, yeah. oh. Just, oh, it hurts oh. so much. He's just in so much pain. He just wouldn't he can't get up. Get up. Yeah. I mean, he also probably shattered some teeth. Yeah. What's great is this can't is also, this is the first time in the entire book where Batman smiles. <laughs> yep. I'm like, that? <laughs> like it. I hurt <laughs> a senior citizen. There's a moment where like Tim is in his Robin costume having breakfast with Alfred and Batman comes in, dressed as Bruce Wayne, and he goes, what the fuck is this? And Tim's like, breakfast. And he's like, no, no costumes upstairs. Like, it's a rule, a hard and fast rule. Hmm. No costumes upstairs. And Tim's like, I have the shades drawn, man. He's like, nope. I'm sorry. I forgot that uh, rules mean that you can make up exceptions and shit. <laughs> so, like, so it's instilled in Tim as, like, you have this hard and fast rule, like, no right. costumes upstairs. So, like, you know, Batman goes to the cave and he takes off, like, his... He like, takes the cowl over his head, but he puts the robe and he's like, I'm gonna have to break my rule about the costumes, I'm just too fucking tired. Where the hell is Alfred? I, I put up with like an hour of his sarcasm for just <laughs> for a bowl of cornflakes and a goddamn bed. And when he gets upstairs, Bane's like, hey, welcome home, bitch. 
And uh, so <laughs> Batman's like, ah, shit. Uh, ah, you know, oh, of all days. <laughs> oh my god. And Alfred's been <laughs> knocked unconscious, and he's not like, Alfred! He's just like, ah, Christ. Are you here to kill me? Because I hope you're here to kill me. Please, please just kill me. <laughs> just, just do it. Yeah, Batman's just like, ah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the one gun in this house? Yeah, where's the gun that killed my parents? <laughs> so, okay, the two guns. <laughs> Maybe Alfred, Alfred's oh, the elephant gun, gun. Yeah, Alfred, quick, get the elephant gun. I think there's somebody downstairs. It's a prowler or something. <laughs> booga booga blam. Yeah, thank you. Yield me. Um, you know, so that so they fight, and uh, you know, it's pathetic. And and Payne even is like, "You're pathetic. You have nothing." And I'm like, "You made him like this, man." Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, this was part of my plan to make him pathetic. Yeah. yeah, but then don't bitch about it. Then it'll be like, how could you have let this happen to yourself? I Look mean, at you, you're so weak. He already was like you, weak. It's you like, did this. Yeah. This was all Quit you. Yourself. Yeah. Quit hitting yeah. yourself. <laughs> Thanks. That's you. You're, you're hitting you're, me. You're hitting me. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, you know, Bane beats Batman savagely. There's actually a really sad oh, he moment. knocks out Alfred, too. Yeah. Alfred's down. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, Alfred can't blow him away. Right. Because Alfred has no such compunctions about not killing people. I was like, I killed dozens of people. Why doesn't Batman have, like, booby traps and shit all right. through Wayne Manor? Because Just in case this happens. Because he, yeah, because Bruce Wayne life is upstairs. Because he's had girlfriends like Vicki Vale, yeah. Chandra. Yeah, what least. happens if they wander around in the middle of the night? Yeah, she's, oh, she gets like a sweet tooth. She goes downstairs, <laughs> falls into a goddamn, like, tiger trap. Well, he's, he's gets friggin'... Gets snatched up by a snare. The fact is, he, even, if they, even, even if they existed... Well, they should be like voice activated or whatever. Oh, he's like, in the cave. Bane, Bane beats him from the highest peak to the lowest dungeon of Wayne Manor. <laughs> like, he beats him all the way through, gets down to the cave, and like, just just hits him with all of his iconography. Like, he he drops the penny on top of him. He smashes Batman through the Jason Todd memorial. And by the way, like, that's also another like great metaphor of like, we are destroying everything that was Batman. Uh. So that we can build it up with this lame character named Jean Paul. Right. Also, it's all going right back. Yeah. After this. Oh, yeah. It's no. not like that stuff Oh, they're, like... they were like, we're putting it all right back. But the thing is, you can't. You do and they try, but the, like, the damage is done. It still happened. Yeah. Yeah. And people remember it. And more people than ever are talking about what just happened. Mm. So, uh, you know, Batman's beaten. And, uh, you know, yeah. Bane breaks him. And he's like, ha ha. And you're like, okay, that's that's pretty messed up. What an insane issue. It's like the death of Superman. Like, oh man, like one whole issue of our protagonist beaten up. It's like the passion of the Christ. <laughs> just just, just 90 yeah, minutes of savage torture. The entire time. It's just Awful. torture porn. Yeah. And, uh, and it's sad, because you're like, that's Batman in his iconic blue and grays. Yeah. And, you know, just Batman getting beaten savagely. And by Jim Aparo, iconic Batman artist who does not draw this kind of savagery, despite the fact that he also drew you know, the death of Jason Todd. But whatever. But we're watching like Jim Aparo kind of say goodbye to the Batman character throughout this whole sequence. You know, we're seeing like, actually we see a greatest hits of Nightfall, watch Batman like beat all these villains and lead up to this moment. Uh, Bane beats him and you're like, oh, wow. And then Bane goes up to like the roof of a building in the middle of like the busiest area of Gotham and goes, hey, and he throws <laughs> hey, everyone. him. And Batman like hits every like branch on the way down. Like he hits right. like every roof, every awning. Bam, well, yeah, I mean, if I just it. threw him off the building and he didn't catch himself, he'd he, splatter he on the pavement. Yeah, we gotta I break had to fall. hit those things. It's like pinball. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, but like, dude, he's already beaten. And he's like, no, but I'm gonna throw him into the city and I want everybody to see him. And right. the, the sequence of Batman just broken in the street, surrounded yeah. by like the denizens of Gotham is it's actually like for me- like, Child crying. I love it. Like there's an yeah. old person, there's a young person, there's a child, there's a mom, there's a, like, there, there's a, there's what clearly is like a criminal. So he's like, yeah, like he's thrilled that Batman's like down. Oh yeah. And he's smoking. Yeah, you get yeah. to see all the different reactions. Yes. Is are these ribs? Those are ribs. Wow. Right? Like what? So uh, obviously Alfred comes to during the battle and he runs to Tim's house, which is coincidentally next door. Right. Because uh, Jim, Tim's father, Jack, hates Bruce because uh, Jack was an absentee father, and then after his paralysis and his like coma, um, he, he's like, I need to make up for lost time, and all the time that I spent gone was occupied by Bruce Wayne. And, and how can I ever compare to that? Exactly, even though I'm like, just a rich playboy myself, but I wasn't a playboy because I had like a wife and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> Jack is like mad at Tim for hanging out with Bruce and he's, ha and he's, and he's mad at Bruce because Bruce has like a reputation. Jack Drake is really disappointed in himself for his half-assed underparenting. So now he's gonna do some half-assed over-parenting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's like, you and me are gonna move into a penthouse into the city and we're gonna just be like two swinging bachelors, kiddo, and yeah, it's gonna be great. And Tim inevitably- <laughs> We're gonna be pals, we're gonna be buddies. <laughs> 
And so Tim, you ever try cocaine? I'm 12. He's 14. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but Tim eventually tricks his father into buying the mansion next door to Bruce's house. <laughs> That's so a pretty dies. good trick. I know. Uh, so Alfred goes to Tim's and he's like, Tim, Batman's dying. We got to stop him. So then they both arrive too late. They don't get there in time. His brain like breaks Batman's back in the Batcave. And then I guess he goes, okay. And then he runs away and goes right. into the middle of the city. Like what? I guess Does he, he gets use the in his car or he, I, so, uh, no, he just walks. No, he just tosses him over his shoulder, yeah. snapped back and all. Oh, arms. yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, God. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so Tim, Jean-Paul, and Alfred impersonate EMTs and arrive on the scene, and they take him. Oh, that's smart. And it's great because there's a moment where, after uh, a few minutes, there's no report from the nearby hospital that supposedly came to the scene that received Batman. And Jim's like, "You people are the worst cops I've ever seen in my life." Like Batman, we is, lost Batman. We lost Batman. He was. Who do you think took him? No one. The, the went Joker. With him? Probably the Joker. No, no one. Yeah, no, no one was even curious. They did. No, they tried, and and Alfred was like, no. <laughs> so they took oh, him away. Oh, here's confidentiality. And Bullock is the one. There's a great moment where Bullock just goes, maybe it was one of his people, and Jim like smiles like warmly, like this kind of like, it, like someone's like, trying oh. to make me feel good about this. Right. And it's effing Bullock. <laughs> and he's like, all right, well, call me if you get anything. Meanwhile, you know, they're, they're inspecting him and, and Tim's like, we gotta take him to a hospital. And Alfred's like, nope. No hospitals. We're not gonna do that. And Tim's like, yeah, it, it's over. And Alfred's like, listen. Yeah. His, we, his back is broken. It, we, we can't cure that. We're not doctors. Well, Tim I don't doesn't care, like, know. Tim doesn't right. know it's, it's broken. Uh, so, but he, he looks pretty messed up though. It's pretty bad. And Alfred's like, if we take him to a hospital and they, and they cure him, they'll find it as Batman and he will essentially die. Mm -hmm. Like we will have taken the mission from him and that will be like killing him. Right. He will never, never forgive, forgive us, us for this. Yeah. <laughs> so they take him to the cave, and that's when they do the whole subplot of like, now we, his spine's broken, we gotta get the special medicine that like, if, if, we're, if it's administered in the next hour, it may... Like allow him to walk? No. It may allow him to move his arms. Like he may, it, we may save the top half of his body. Like it's something like that. It's right. like, it's real bad. Well then he's gonna lose the mission anyway. Oh yeah. But... At least no one will sue him for being Batman. Like, I don't know. It's, yeah. So well, I won't have taken it from him. Exactly. Though, He'll, right? He can decide whether he wants to be Batman or not. Yeah, he lost that on his own by losing to Bane. Yeah, yeah by getting his ass kicked. Yeah. So uh, they How get. How do they know where Bane's going to drop his body in order to be the first ones I on the scene? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the cops, like, they, they, they listen to the radio. I guess they have a police scanner. Maybe. So anybody could have done that. Of course. Yeah. It's like just Joker a miracle that have. no one just, did. Thankfully, Joker's Thank like, God it wasn't Joker. Joker's set in teeth. He's like, yeah, no. he's like, that sucks. Like, I don't oh want to do that God. anymore. The Joker's on a couch like, oh. <sighs> oh, that was real bad. And he's actually, actually, we do get closure on that because, uh, you know, Joker's like, woohoo, that was fun. And, uh, and Scarecrow's like, okay. Um, <laughs> don't freak out. That but. was... <laughs> I just saw the news, yeah, and uh, somebody else just beat Batman. No, 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 that oh. doesn't even come up. Oh no, no, they're just kind of like, okay, Scarecrow's disappointed because like they're not making any money. <laughs> yeah, uh, were we supposed to like profit in some way? There's a the moment where like, because Scarecrow, of course, he's 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 a disgraced college professor who loves fear, and, and my fear toxin uh, isn't free. No, and there's right. a great moment where he's talking to the Joker about it, and he's like, you know, he's like, yeah, well, I need to work on my, you know, those lab experiments aren't free, and. Joker's like, oh right, I forgot. Science yes, is your great, your great passion or whatever. Like because you're not just like master of fear, you're also like master of being a disgraced college professor and like chemicals and things. Right, you have a higher purpose. Yeah. Oh, excuse oh. me. You're still wearing a effing <laughs> scarecrow costume. Stop pretending you're better than me. I don't think nature is going to accept your submission. Yeah. About the you know fear and crap when you're wearing a. Goddamn basket! Exactly. Your name is Scarecrow. You're right. published under that. Right. How's that supposed to work? Come on. So oh, published under Crane. Do people know Crane is Scarecrow? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. no. <laughs> in fact, in this, he goes by like a pseudonym, and one of the people in the in, he goes to he goes by a pseudonym, and he like dresses like somebody else, and he shows up to, at a school, and it's a school that he was fired from, and one of the kids in the class is like that's the fucking Scarecrow. <laughs> Uh, Scarecrow is like so pissed the Joker makes fun of him that like he attacks him and he shoots him with the with the fear toxin. Great moment because uh, and I wish it were earned because in the story Scarecrow laments that the fear toxin doesn't work on Joker, but then in this 
he uses it on Joker, and Joker's like, oh! And Scarecrow like smiles to himself, like you can see a smile through his mask. He's like, oh, this is so great. And Joker's like, oh! Like, like in that moment of Batman oh, yeah. He's like, oh! And he goes, oh, my face, my face! Yeah, and he goes, oh, not bad. What other flavors you got? And then he hits Scarecrow with a chair, and he goes, all right, bye. I'm off. <laughs> it's with a chair like a professional wrestler, which makes sense because they're wearing insane outfits. Exactly. Yeah. And he's like, well, let me hear it from you people. Uh, so like, bye. <laughs> no, you could kill him right now. Nah, just call it professional courtesy. We were partners. Right. You know? No, it's got to be part of a scheme. It can't be like a spur of the moment <laughs> yeah. thing. So, uh, yeah. So he leaves. He's got to be wondering when it's going to happen. Exactly. He's got to worry about it forever. <laughs> okay, so Alfred is wearing an EMT costume. Uh, Jean-Paul is wearing an EMT costume. Robin is in his Robin costume. Well, he yes. switched into it, I think. No, Robin was wearing a Robin costume in, in, the, in, the, in, the, ambulance? in the ambulance. He was just hiding in the ambulance. Yeah. If someone hiding. just looked inside, like, it's like those EMTs hey. are all picking him up, and then they look and they're like, is that Robin? Hey, why is Robin? What is Robin doing in there? Well, I, I mean, that would be more comforting, I think. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, he's just Robin and, yep. Yeah. yeah, well, because he thought he was going to jump into a fight right. against Bane. Right, It's like, i got to fight Bane and d lose immediately. <laughs> and then die! <laughs> So then, of course, you know, Batman's paralyzed, and, and uh, after the, you know, he comes out of the coma, and he, you know, thanks Tim for being reckless against Two-Face in that story that didn't happen. Uh-huh. And uh, they're talking about, like, the mission, and Alfred's like, uh, fucking Tim, I'm like, knock it off, man, it's over. Like, he's not gonna walk ever again. Uh -huh. And, uh, and Batman's sad, you know, because he was already exhausted, and now he's like, and I failed. Like, I failed everything. Right. Now, now Bane rules the city. Yes. Whatever that means. Well, and, uh, Gotham is his. We I don't even him. know what he's going to do, because right. that doesn't even, like, make sense. Yeah. Well, I beat you, so now I rule. It's like, I didn't rule either. Right. But, uh, no, what happens is Bane... Uh, Replaces he, the bat signal with a big B. Oh, my God. If it were a movie. <laughs> but, uh, or, or a comic book written today. But uh, he, instead, you know, he goes to, like, the mob. And he like murders mob bosses, and he tells all the henchmen like, "You work for me now." Hmm. And then he, he and and so he takes over like most of the mobs. And then like you know he's got his his henchmen, you know those 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 colorful characters. And he's like, "What have we got?" And one of them is like, "We don't own the unions yet. We need the unions because I am a comic book writer, <laughs> and I vaguely know that unions are associated with mobs." <laughs> Right. So we got to own the unions. I remember, right. I remember somebody saying that, and like, I want to say it was like Scarface or Godfather or Goodfellas or uh -huh. you know, Carlito's Way. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, what, like, what, what is what, this? The '70s? What you, right. What? What the fuck? Yeah, you know, Jimmy Hoffa and so forth. What? Name me one thing about Jimmy Hoffa besides this day. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big mob meeting with the guys who haven't been killed by Bane in like a Gotham Sky Dome, and Bressy is like trying to tell. The other mobsters like, look, this Bane guy, he's the future, he's going places, let's let's do this. Mm -hmm. And Tim is like, Well, I guess that's that. Like, you know, Bressy is in Bane's pocket and uh Azrael, who has now become Batman, because in the story, you know, like basically Robin is like, I guess Azrael should be Batman. Like Batman, Bruce Wayne says, It should be Azrael, I guess. Like you, you know, cause cause obviously it can't be Dick. That mm -hmm. would that would be insane. It'd be insane for my surrogate son and current crime-fighting superhero Nightwing to be Batman. So he's like, no, we're not gonna do that. Instead, let this amateur that has only been starting to pump iron, like what, three weeks ago? What? Uh, three and a half. Okay, so yeah, you're definitely juiced. And so, uh, yeah, he's gonna be Batman now. And Tim is like, hot shot, that sounds great. He goes to his apartment, he's like, here you go, buddy, here's your costume, you're Batman now, yeah! And then immediately regrets it. Yeah, like, of course. And it's like, what the? Why did you ever feel good about that? But uh, so, Bat it's not earned. so Batman and Robin, you know, they're doing their thing, and Bo and Bruce's whole stipulation is, you get to be Batman, you gotta, you gotta like clean things up, but don't go anywhere near Bane. Mm -hmm. Don't go near Bane. He right. doesn't explain. It's not like he's like, I'm afraid of Bane. He defeated me, or right. I'm gonna get my revenge on him. Right. right. No, it's he's just fine. don't go near him. Right. The same reasons that he gives Robin for not helping him fight Firefly. You just stay with yeah, the stay car. Stay in the car. Right. That's it. Just just follow my orders. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> Asriel's immediately like, no. Bane's the target. Let's go to get Bane. And so, uh, and Tim's like, come on, Asriel, don't. Like, no. Uh, we can't get Bane. He's no, Batman Bane. said no. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is what the books are going to be, huh? Uh, I'm, I'm so glad. And then Night Quest is just, it's two plots. It's Bruce going to rescue Chandra and Jack Drake. Oh boy, <laughs> and John Paul Valley Batman doing things, and Tim Drake going, oh. <laughs> no, but Batman said no. Don't do it. 
And it's what's really funny, it's like the Michigan J Frog scenario, where like every time that Bruce and Jean are near each other, like Robin isn't there. So he's like, how are things going? And Jean's like, pretty good. And Bruce's like, good, I'm leaving. And Tim's like, wait, <laughs> it's not wait, good. Wait, it's not good. It's actually real bad. <laughs> it's like a hop, skip, and a jump from Jean-Paul wearing a Batman costume to Jean-Paul wearing an insane Batman costume. <laughs> right, it's like, okay, well, this isn't... This, this isn't gonna, gonna work, I have, to be, I have to be as real. This is not sharp enough. That's exactly right. Uh, I mean, it's interesting because having seen his ninja suit, I'm like, I, I see it, he ninjifies Batman. the Batman. It's like, uh, yeah, this Batman suit's like kind of lame. I kind of want to make it more like my ninja suit. Right, like ninjas that, that Robin handed me. <laughs> the one that I didn't come up with or design. Right. Like, what? Yeah, but I made it my own. Yeah, so. <laughs> I've gotta make changes to it. I mean, everyone has to make it their own. It's true, you gotta own it. Like in the Batman story, like Catwoman gets like flagged down and meets up with Bane and she's like, hey. And, uh, and Is this and, like good Catwoman? No, or? it's bad Catwoman. She's like, you took down Batman. So yeah, good for you. And you're like, what? Oh yeah, I guess they're villains. Hmm. So the Catwoman book is not in here. No. Would you consider it like a is there like a tie-in? It hasn't, it hasn't come up yet. Like the oh, Catwoman okay. tie-ins haven't actually occurred, so we have to oh, wait. Oh, okay. But, uh, but for now, we know that Catwoman is like encouraged by Bane to join his team, which she doesn't do. Instead, when Alfred and Bruce go to chase Jack and Chandra, they find out that like the blood on the ski mask of the guys who were kidnapping and the Batman punched when he was in his wheelchair have immunizations for a number of diseases, one of which is malaria, and there are only a few places where like malaria is still prevalent, and one of them is Penadoro, the island nation that Bane came from in the first place. And so Bruce reasons that Bane is behind the kidnapping of Jack Drake and Chandra Kinsolving, and so he's like, I'm gonna go stop Bane by going to his prison island and rescuing them. And so he, char he gets a private plane, and then Selena Kyle wants to go there too, and so she sneaks onto the plane in like the lamest excuse I've ever seen in my life. She's <laughs> like, she shows up, she's like, hey, uh, I wanna go too, can I come? And they're like, no. And I'm like, I'm sorry, <laughs> they've never met? She's like, hi, I'm Selena Kyle. And they're like, oh yes, I believe we've met at a couple of functions. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, yeah, and you're Catwoman. But anyway, so... Uh, well, we're just pre we're playing pretend. Right? right? Selena Kyle. Oh, oh. that, that, that don't, doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. But uh, so... The what, role playing. Yeah. So what happens is she somehow... Because they're like, please leave. And she leaves the plane. Somehow she gets back on the plane. It's a private plane. There's four chairs. <laughs> Just, you know, and like two of them belong to the pilots. But Alfred tries to use the bathroom, and it's occupied. And he opens it up, and Selena comes out, and she like rubbing her eyes, like she just woke up. And I'm like, what? What the fuck is this? She's like, I'm sorry, I just had to use the facilities, and then I, I must have drifted off. Oh, are we in the air? And I'm like, yeah, all right, uh, <sighs> Bruce, would you knock her the hell out? <laughs> I know you have a parachute on this thing. Yep, and just, just huh. kick her ass out. <laughs> So tough Tony Bressy is trying to strong arm the other union people right. into giving Bane the unions. Oh no, and, uh, what's he chose the unions, that's it. That's it, then, then Gotham is sunk. Well, he doesn't control the railroads yet, does he? <laughs> <laughs> he needs to control the means of production. <laughs> what about the oil? <laughs> so, and coal. So it turns out that Bane has kidnapped tough Tony Bressy's kids and uh, He's, you know, so Br Bressy's uh, an unwilling participant in the Bane takeover. Mm. And uh, so, uh, b you know, Batman and Robin like beat him up and uh, Batman's like, okay, here's the deal. You're gonna like set up a meet, tell him you're in, and then I'm gonna show up and beat the shit out of Bane. You get your kids back, you, know, you get the exchange. Like you, you're gonna do the deal. You're gonna get the kids back and I'm gonna punch Bane in the face. And when, and you're gonna tell me where the location is by writing it on a little piece of paper like you're a pirate. And you're gonna slip it into <laughs> this conspicuous crack in the wall of this building we're in right now. And I need to invent special sharp gloves that will enable me <laughs> to reach into the crack to get this, no I'm like, what? Those are called tweezers. This is insane. Like what? the justification of him making these insane gloves. Uh, well, it has to be that he, like, like 
He's like looking for any reason. Any reason like, to get give them. me a reason to make I need these my, gloves. I need these gloves to like, have sharp like, blades. It's on a them. symptom of his madness. It is that he thinks that's reasonable. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and Robin's should... like, I'm sorry. None of this is a good idea. Like this is this is out of nowhere. It seems like you just want to make those sharp gloves. Yeah. No. No. It's so I can get the secret note out of the it's wall. The only yeah. way to ah, get the secret note And then, and then you're gonna out. put the gloves away. I mean, if they fit really well. I well, I mean, I don't know. Oh, Maybe okay. Go, go. Maybe just see what they can do. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, so uh, Jean Paul as Batman, he's already like unhinged. He's beating people with hammers and stuff. And uh, and Robin's like, oh Jesus. Robin goes home. And uh, his dad's been kidnapped. He has no idea, and he's asleep in his room. And Bruce and Alfred are like, "All right, we're gonna leave." And so they bump into Jean Paul, and Batman's like, "Oh, hey, so Jean Paul, how's it going?" He's like, "Pretty good." He's like, "Okay, great. Me and Alfred are leaving. We gotta go. The cave is yours. Do what you. You're Batman now. The cave is yours." And Jean Paul's and everything in it. And Batman's <laughs> like, "Oh, okay. That was a little strange. Uh, let's go." <laughs> so then they no, leave. No, just the cave. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, you can use the things in it. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, I felt like that was kind of implicit when I said that, but okay. So, <laughs> D try not to change too much, though. Right, please. Like, don't, like, defecate on the floor or anything. Like, I know you will. So, literally... Well, that's what bats do. It's called guano. <laughs> exactly. Guano was referenced earlier, like, Joker said, No, like, Joker calls him guano yeah. man all the time. Batman says, the cave is yours. I mean, Bruce says, the cave is yours. Batman says, and everything in it. What? <laughs> he literally just says, what? What? What a fucking weird thing uh, to say. Oh, nothing. Oh, uh, nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's good enough for me. Listen, you know what? The fact is, I did smell something weird in this situation, but like, I don't have time. I gotta go. Yeah. Okay. This was not a good idea, but uh, I already made other plans. Yeah. But Hopefully the that works out. Plane's already fueled. Yeah. So I gotta go. Yeah, so he leaves. Be a problem when I come back. <laughs> oh jeez, I better fix my back <laughs> quick. Uh, too bad Clark's gone. So uh, yeah, and then and then uh, you know he's like, oh man, I could use some stuff being built. Hey Harold, you know the genius hunchback that lives in the cave. Where are you? He like hides in the cave, deeper in the cave with Ace, and just eats dog food. And they just hide there. And you don't see them anymore. <laughs> and you're like, what? And so uh, I, I love. Jean-Paul making the gauntlets, he, he designs them. And by designs, I mean he draws them the way they're going to be drawn in the comic book on a piece of paper. <laughs> and takes the time to draw the Batman logo on them so you know that they're a failure with Batman because there's no other way to know except they have the same the color scheme of blue and yellow. So then he makes the gloves. I love the transition of him. He drew them and then he has them and he's using them to get the note. And now he's Batman with the gloves and he's doing his glove thing, you know? He's doing yeah. his half Azrael thing. And Tim makes one comment of like, those are more Azrael gloves than Batman gloves, but whatever. And, uh, you know. But you know, you do you. Yeah. I guess that's your right. And he's he's like, no, okay. And uh, and and Jean Paul keeps going like, listen, I don't need you. And it's like, we just did this. We did this for all of Nightfall. Bruce being like, no, stay in the car. <laughs> and, was, and and Jean Paul being like, I don't need you. <laughs> and Robin's like, you truly are Batman. So anyway. Batman has this plan to take down Bane. Yeah. And Tim's right. like, no. He said no. He said, don't don't fight Bane. Yeah, well, so that then, was old Batman. Yeah, yeah, that's before he saw these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah if, if Bruce saw me wearing these, he'd be like, oh, you can take on Bane with those gloves. Yeah. Now that you have those gloves. Those, like, are no, such a, those are so, oh my God, those gloves. Those are so super cool and awesome. Whoa. You can totally take down Bane with those. Yeah. Guys, you just keep being Batman. Right, so they fight, uh, you know, so they go, so they go to the, the warehouse, they do the exchange, and then it's great because uh, it, 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 Bane's not there. Bane's people are there, you know, like zombie. And I love that he has the kids, like he has like a, like he has money in his hands. He's like, here are your kids. <laughs> like, uh, how are you holding them? Like, how, <laughs> oh shit, the script the says. the scruff of the neck. <laughs> the script says, and then zombie delivers the kids. Like, panel one, <laughs> zombie delivers the kids. Wide shot, panel two. <laughs> Batman screams from a high place, where's Bane? Oh, I only have one panel to show you zombie delivering the kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that zombie's like, here are your kids. And Batman just, where's Bane? <laughs> and they're like, ah! And then they immediately shoot at the place. And Robin's like, no! And then, uh, and, and, and you know, so Batman chases after them. And Robin's like, dude, you know, there were guns and shit. And Jean-Paul goes, yeah, I saw you coming. You know, you wanted to like back up, right? You wanted to like be given more responsibility and shit. Well, here it is. You deal with the shit I don't want to deal with, like hostages. Yeah, like the kids. Yeah. Wow. I know. Batman immediately takes down all of his 
people. Like he shoots, bi- he shoots bird with like all these shurikens. The bird itself he swoops c- in. And he he cuts its wing. He cuts its wing off. What? That's so brutal. I know that bird has been a bitch the whole book. I gotta tell you. <laughs> and you're just like bird asking for it. Eat it, bird. Ah! Even though that's animal cruelty. It completely is. The bird's a villain too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and then he beats. That's Trog. like the Fire Nation Falcon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, Bane's he, people are he, taken down. He throws batarangs just into Bird's chest. It's just like he, ch- ch- he shoots them out of his gloves. Yeah. But wouldn't that kill him? Nah, they're superficial. They just go like. Oh, it's just like they just embed they into embed his ribs. Into him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, just, he hasn't amped lot. up the uh, velocity yet. Exactly. All yeah. right. You know, more powerful than a Nerf gun. Jean Paul's like, I need to find Bane, and these assholes aren't going to tell me. And in fact, they're interrogated for 24 hours. 24 hours? Yeah, that's what they say. That's amazing. And Bullock and Jim and his people like interrogated for 24 hours. So, uh-huh. does it work? No, no, it doesn't. They they <laughs> die then give up Bane. So right. then Jean Paul springs them. It's like it's not working. He drops like a bunch of like equipment into their cells and says, you know, like enjoy. Use this to get out. Yeah, B. Yeah. You thought it was you thought it was for Bane. But it's actually Batman. It's actually Batman. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and that's and, and like you as the reader, let the reader feel a little smart. You know? Right. But uh then someone says, You fool! You thought the B stood for Bane, but it could have also stood for Batman. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm not a dumbass. <laughs> you know, I'm almost eleven. <laughs> so um yeah, so he frees uh, Bane's people. Bane's people immediately go to Bane, and they're like, oh, man, oh, Bane. Uh, prison break was a thing of beauty. Way to go. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, he's like, I didn't, I didn't free you. I don't like, give a huh? shit about you. Yeah. Why would I free you? Yes. And, uh, and then Batman's like, ah! <laughs> yeah. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> so then they fight, and, uh, you know, Bane beats the shit out of him. Yeah. You I know? Mean... And they, they have a, like, he's just like, yeah. Like, I'm ready for you. Like, Batman was weak, but now, but I'm in my prime. And then Bane's like, all right, well, then now I have more venom, and now I'm stronger than you. Right. Does Bane know it's not Batman? Oh, yeah, no. He's like, you're the pretender. I destroyed Batman. Yeah, good. Okay. Right. I broke like, his This is not like, oh. What? How you're, are you healed? You're immortal. No, he's just like, no, you're, I'll beat you just as easily as I beat, like, the, the real Batman. And they fight, and, like, they're, the, the, where, the, the penthouse that Bane is, like, living in or staying in is like in or near like a mall or like an outdoor shopping center. And so, uh, you know, he shoots up Bane with like bat shurikens and Bane uses one of his bloody shurikens to like saw the rope that Batman got tied up in and is dangling from (laughs) in a, you know, poetic and dramatic sequence. Uh, Eventually, Jean-Paul frees himself and he's like gonna aim, he's just like, I gotta fall gracefully into that fountain over there. And uh, he finds that the cape that he uses slowed him down. Like it kept him from mm. from going further. Right. And so uh, he barely lands in the water and it's in the most pathetic display you've ever seen. <laughs> he like belly flops He's into the water. And he hits his shin, but like, and they make sure to draw oh, it like, yeah. oh, his shin, but it never comes up. <laughs> and so uh, he's just like, Rrr. you know he was feeling it though. And yeah. Bane just like trucks it out of there. <laughs> and this is this is Jim Aparo's <laughs> like Batman. Boss. Yeah, he's just like, oh my God. And uh, so, you know, Batman's like, oh my God, that was, it was embarrassing and terrible, and yeah. I didn't even beat Bane. Damn it. You know what the my problem was? My suit didn't have enough sharp stuff on it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's like, well, since the system well, in the- my brain made me make gauntlets, maybe yeah. it can make me a whole Batman suit. Yeah, the, the sharp stuff will help me cut through the air faster. Yeah. I could have gotten to the water. Exactly. Oh, the gauntlets came from the system? Yes, the system helped. Oh. He was like, I need some, I need the edge. And the system's like, edge? Well, you mean like gloves with knives for fingers? <laughs> that also shoot grappling hooks and shurikens the shape like bats? <laughs> and I'll draw them first, but then I'll build them in real life? <laughs> and he's like, sure, this system sure is amazing. Can I get a copy of that medallion, please? <laughs> Since it teaches me martial arts and also makes me like an expert artist and like fabricator? Like I'm a freaking engineer. Uh, after you know Jean Paul freed Bane's people, Bane's people go back to Bane, and Bane embarrasses them by saying that he was never going to save them. He beats the shit out of them again, <laughs> <laughs> and Bane is the only one who escapes. Yeah. So the cops, like they they have everybody, and like one cop is trying to wrangle the bird. And the bird's like, Aah! and he's just like, ah! like this is not my job description. And I'm like, yeah, that's that, that bird is a suspect. You like, bring him in for questioning. Exactly. <laughs> that, that, Where's Bane? <laughs> <laughs> 
Is this a different bird? Because it's not bird. missing a wing or yeah, no, anything. He just, no, he hurt, he hurt the bird. Oh, he scratched he its wing. It yeah. looked like he sliced the wing in half. Oh, yeah, no. And it I, looked like he crippled oh, that bird. It said that. And then they went, that's too dark. Like, we can't. We can't have him kill I birds. can't believe we actually got that published. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, hey, uh, they yeah, called up from stairs. Fix that bird. You gotta, you gotta show a panel where the bird's fine. No, no, bird is, no I was gonna do a panel where like the bird, bird died. To, bird died, and he has to eat the oh, bird like, in, like a ritualistic ceremony, <laughs> uh, like passing the torch. Yeah, they yeah, should have yeah. taken the bird to like a friggin' bird sanctuary, and it like nurses itself back. To, it's got like half a wing, yeah, and then yeah. they get it like a robot wing, oh and then it becomes God. like a superhero bird or like a supervillain bird. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. My yeah. God. I would like it if it's just just the first part. Just like no, it goes through a, like a rapture sanctuary, and right. they're just like, yeah, that's the end of it. Yeah. But, and then people get to visit that bird. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, this bird almost killed that days. Yeah. So uh, you know, Robin and Jean Paul have like a fight. Uh, Jean Paul makes the suit, and then uh, you know he's like, and all right, he does here we pull go. Pull ups with the gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah I'm, see how versatile these gloves are. So uh, meanwhile, Bane is like, yeah, and I need to fight, you know, Batman again. Like I'll, I need in order to rule Gotham, I need to show that like. And, you know, nobody don't, can challenge. Nobody me. can challenge me. No, no, no other Batman. Right. I'll beat every. Once I beat this Batman, I'll. It'll be a. It'll be a lesson to any other would be Batman. Wouldn't beating the first Batman that should have been, but there's another Batman like <laughs> the next fucking day. So you know. So uh, I gotta. I gotta beat this guy. Seems like it might him. open the what floodgates happened? to even more lesser Batman. Right. But uh, yeah, and then they'll swarm you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so Bane uh, obviously he was cut by all those sharp claws and stuff. I guess he's like cut in the throat or the jugular because oh. he's just bleeding everywhere. Oh, yeah. And at one point, like he sneaks into the cells where like the, the the guys are being held, and he's like, "I'm losing blood, zombie." And I'm like, "Oh my, you're dead." <laughs> he's he's bleeding everywhere. You're bleeding continuously and, from the neck, and, and I, you can't stop it. You're going to die. Yeah, and I love if, like. If, it's been hours since they were obviously arrested and brought to the police. Yeah, they're processed. Yeah, they've been processed. Yeah, you're dead. You're dead. But uh, no, he's 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 big. So he's like, I have so venom. much blood. Yeah, but he's like, I need more venom, zombie. You need to tell me. And he's like, oh. And I love the drawing of him because like, zombie looks like such a rube. He's like, uh -huh. He's literally got blood pouring down his head from <laughs> Bane lurching over him. And he's like, yeah, I got a cash somewhere where we beat up tough Tony Bressy. Yeah, you can go get that. And Bane's like, okay, bye. And he's like, wait, but like, you're going to spring us, right? And he's like, I didn't do it the first time. Why would I do it now? <laughs> like, bye. I said bye. Like, he leaves. Don't make this weird. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so Bane gets the venom he needs, and he's like, yeah, now I'm bigger. And, uh, and then he goes into like the middle of like what would be Times Square, and he uses, like, there's a big uh, ad that you can type the things into that like say what the ad is. It's like, what? Uh, it's just a big like sign. And Bane is like, Bane writes, quote, Batman, now. That's what I want, mm. you know? Because uh, the ad asks the question. It like, poses the rhetorical, like, what do you want from Gotham? He's like, I want Batman now. And then uh, Batman shows up in his awesome new costume. And you're like, yeah. And I love the, the switch over from Aparo art to Terry Austin, Mike Manley art. It's like, you see Robin in the cave find like the drawings of what his suit is going to be. And he's like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Next shot. <laughs> A spectacular like image of the new suit. Yeah, and uh, I love it because actually, um, Joe Casada, I think he designed the suit just like he designed the original Azrael suit, which makes effing sense to me. But uh, he had what he thought was permission to draw the debut suit on a Wizard magazine cover. And Wizard was like, fuck yeah. So he drew this whole ass cover, revealing the suit in this big, awesome way. And then uh, he asked somebody at DC, like, hey, by the way, like, I got permission to do this. And they're like, no. No, you don't. No, it what? debuts in the book. People are going to buy the book to see it. Yes. They see it first somewhere else. On Wizard Magazine. <laughs> and he's like, oh. Uh, so then he had oh. to, like, color it all in. So the cover of it is a silhouetted new suit. And you're like, oh. And because I was like, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, and I'll be, admittedly, it's rad, but it's still fun that he had to color it all in. So anyway, we see the suit and like, you know, he's swinging all over the city. You know, he's just like, he's a one man Batmobile. Holy shit. He's got shit. all these pouches for all his bat shrookins. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, got, well, he's got that leg pouch where he keeps his fruit roll ups. I gotta tell you, it's still rad. Yeah, it, it looks cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It makes no sense. No. Like, it's just a mess of design, but yeah. that's right. Spawn is too. Why yep. would hell make a suit like that? <laughs> so, you know, Batman shows up in like the middle of town and uh, all the cops are there. Uh, Mayor Kroll has already told Lieutenant Kitsch, like, you let Batman do whatever he wants. <laughs> so the cops aren't involved. Right. And, uh, and, you know, 
new Batman's like, Bane, show yourself. And Bane like jumps through the sign that he made. It's like electronic. It's like, it's like yeah. And, and he, he lands on a on. car and crushes the car. Yeah, and he's like, let's go. And so they're fight. It's basically like uh, the fight at the end of the third Matrix movie where oh, all yes. the Smiths are watching and it's raining. Batman is the one <laughs> and he will save us. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly that. <laughs> Like nobody get involved. Just let the yep, the just... avatars of the city fight. <laughs> so they do, and uh, and Gordon's there, and he's like, oh, and it's funny because it's raining, and it's like it's perfect. It's like a baptism. <laughs> and uh, w while they're yelling, like you know, Bane's like, "You're not him. You're a fake, and you'll never be him." And Jim's like, "What do you say? I can't hear him over the rain." And I'm like, "Nah." <laughs> that way we can let Jim think that he might really be Batman. I'm like, no, you saw his ribs. Do yeah. his shirt. Yeah, you know he's not coming back. And then in like No Man's Land, he goes, like he yells at Batman at one point, and he's like, "You really expect me to believe that was some that you were, that, that was that that was you? <laughs> like you really have no respect for me?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, well, neither do the writers." So mm -hmm. you know they fight, and it's just a big fight where it goes throughout the city. You know, it ends up in a train, like in The Fugitive, mm. and uh, Robin helps out by like separating the train cars so that like the fight takes place in the solo train car. Oh, and apparently he kicks part of his mask off. Oh, he, no, he slices it with his razor sharp hands. Yeah. Great. That's that's yep. great because it shows, you can see like the anguish on Bane's oh, face. Yeah. And be like, oh, oh that's God. what that is. Okay. I yeah. saw the foot in yeah, the, the previous panel. Yeah, the foot panels, first like, and then. He kicked it off. And then he falls up with a swipe. With a swipe, yeah. 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 yeah he's just, he's just kicking the crap out of Bane. The fat mask and not the face. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So they fight. This makes you wonder, like, why doesn't he just use a sword? If he's using all these knives and crap all over his suit, just right. pull out a sword, just cut his arm off. Yeah. I mean, he's like, going what's to. Bane gonna do? Right. Why don't you use your Azrael suit that has like a big blade that catches on fire? No right. fire at all in the suit. And like, why what is hit him with a tank? Right. Right. <laughs> I could be the that would that would be very useful. <laughs> so Bane's like just freaking out. He's just roided out jackass. And then at some point he's like, oh, I, I, you know what? I don't even need to beat you because I already beat Batman. I already proved that I was the, the that I'm the greatest. You know what? I'm ready to fight. I already won. I yeah. already won, man. Yep. Still to go. What's up? So, I'm the heavyweight champion of, of Gotham, and I'm not granting you a title challenge. That's right. So I, you I can't I, the win. Belt, belt's mine. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they fight, and just you know, Jean Paul just beats him savagely using like his. Suit that has like lasers and fucking razor sharp bats <laughs> and super armor. You know, yep. Bane is wearing essentially like his pajamas. Yeah. And and Jean Paul's walking around in a car. <laughs> a car with spikes. Like he's wearing an Iron Man suit that's sharp. Yep. And uh, yeah, you wonder how he beat him so, so easily. Uh, yeah. At the end of it, you know. Uh, eventually, Bane, Bane just runs away. Oh yeah, he's just like, I gotta go. <laughs> oh god, he's gonna. Freaking kill me! Oh shit! This guy's insane! <laughs> oh, I just remembered I have to free my henchman! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, another couple of rounds with a zombie ought to help out. Uh, so yeah, they, uh, they, yeah, they fight. And the oh. police are just like. Oh no! Oh no, no. Oh yeah, no. Let, it, let, let them, them fight. fight. Well, that's because the mayor told him. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Kroll is like, no, let's see how this plays out. Like the mayor wanted. Right. Um, so uh, ultimately, you know. Jean Paul has the upper hand on Bane, and he's got him at his mercy. And he's got him with the with the claws, and uh, and everyone's just letting him go for it. People, you know, people like Robin and Jim are like, oh no. And Jim Gordon is like, if he kills him, that that way we'll know it's not really Batman. Mm. And Robin is like, come on, man, fight the system. And I'm like, yeah, you said it, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1993, baby. Right. <laughs> Uh, the system? The system, capital says. S. You know, the system that makes him into a killing machine. Not like, you know, anarchy yeah. in the UK. <laughs> well, you know, and that is what the system does, right? It turns people into killers, like That's ordinary right. people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then, uh, you know, Batman goes like, you're done, Bane. Blackgate will hold the pieces together for you. And uh, so he goes away well, and- And Bane like, is like, kill well, me. Yeah, kill me. I, I don't want this anymore. Right. I, I, I failed. You beat me. Mm -hmm. You have to kill me. Yep. Nope. I'm not gonna do that. And uh, well, at least break my back a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's something wrong with you. Feels like you won it. No, yeah, forget about it. So then, um, it, it's great because we do get a hook moment at the end of it, because you know he run he, Robin like, blocks Azrael Batman's path, and he basically goes, "You are the pan." <laughs> he like, did it. He's like, "I don't approve of your methods, but I guess I guess you are Batman." And I love what Azrael does. Does he say I'm the goddamn Batman? <laughs> oh, if only. Uh, if only. No, he yet. runs away into the darkness. And in the shadows goes, thanks, kid. 
Uh, wait, wait. Look over there. Thanks, kid. And I love him running because, like, it looks it, it, the way it's displayed. He looks heavy. He's like, yeah. Okay. <sighs> Okay, I'm okay. getting out of here. All right, it's like, chum, chum, <laughs> chum, chum, Boy, chum, you are chum. sure-footed as hell. <laughs> a little lighter. <laughs> okay, we're gonna. It, what's What's ironic is he will only add more shit to this thing. Yeah. Okay. The way this ends mm -hmm. with with Robin like earnestly telling him like you earned, earned it. it. Yeah. Like I guess you are the Batman, and he's like, thanks, kid. Yeah. Like. Is it like, like, and this is Batman forever, uh, and then they change their minds later, no. or are they just okay. like trying to sell you on it so hard? That's exactly right. No, they, the the, the people in, in charge, and they've admitted this fully, uh, have said the plan was to trick the audience into thinking. That right. First, they wanted to, you to think that Bruce Wayne is dead, and he's never coming back. Right. But, barring that, they were like, he's paralyzed. Right. And he's, he's never going to be never Batman. Never coming back. And this is Batman now. And he will be Batman forever. Of course, we know that at the end of the year, he will not only not be Batman, but he'll be the secret villain of this entire event. Yeah. But we actually invented him so that he would be that. And uh, so yeah, it's just a big fat lie. <laughs> and in fact, even Robin's earnest uh, endorsement of Batman is a lie because almost in the next chapter, He's like, hey, uh, Azrael, that's not the way we do things. Or, hey, that is not what Batman <laughs> they, would do. Or you are not Batman. Immediately. Yeah, th immediately. Because once you start doing that with Robin, like, saying, like, oh, no, this isn't work, then the audience knows, like, oh, oh yeah, well, no. Oh, then I'm supposed to agree with you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like, they maintain the fiction that this is the new status quo for arguably, like, less than one issue. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's... <laughs> that's kind of a missed opportunity. I know. I feel like if you're gonna go to the trouble of trying to fake out the audience, like do lean into it for yeah. a little while. I mean, he is he is Batman for an unforgivably long time. Well, yeah. Is it because he his methods just get more extreme? Yeah, yeah. So Rob is just like, but this isn't right, and everyone's like, well, maybe this is the new. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, true. but maybe Rob is wrong. Yeah, maybe actually Robin sucks, I, and I am, Batman's awesome. I'm just gonna say that Asriel did beat Bane. Yeah. Now I should point out that like the audiences have changed a little bit in 30 years. Uh, for example, nobody was on board for Azrael. <laughs> like, in, in this presentation, mm -hmm. no one was like, yeah, that's my Batman now. Most people were like, this is, this is terrible. That's freaking weird. That's weird. You just ruined a Punisher crossover with this guy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God we got the other that? one. Why would you do that? This is horrible. But, a few short decades later, when they do it with Superior Spider-Man, you split the fucking audience. Right. Half of them were like, oh, like, uh, yeah. that's Spider-Man for me now. <laughs> Is this masturbating psycho? <laughs> I love it. And I think that's, you know what it was? I think it's because uh, Superior Spider-Man's a little more secular. You know, this guy, mm -hmm. uh, his whole shtick is all about this, like, Order of St. Dumont. It's impenetrable. <laughs> it's not, the mass well, audience is not going to get involved. Yeah, it is, it well, is pretty impenetrable. Like, his motivation is like, what? I mean, his motivation to be Bane is, Bane pushed me out of the way one time. <laughs> then he beats right. him, and he's like, I have, no other I, I have no other motivation to be Batman. I wanted to be Batman so I could beat Bane. I beat Bane, and now I have to keep being Batman. And that's, uh, at least the people who are writing it are the same people who introduced it. So it's not like, okay, and then we give the book to Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee and just let them go for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because that would have been a problem. <laughs> but instead, it's the same people who don't like him to begin with. So he's an unlikable douchebag who does really unlikable things and he's unrelatable. And so you're just kind of like, ugh. Like, I mean, that's it. You know, like, and there's other stories we didn't get into. Like, Zaz takes over a school for girls and uh, they, you know, they don't, don't, they don't die. You know, Batman gets involved. <laughs> right. Um, Thank goodness. Batman saves the day. Yeah. Uh, is Zaz? Does Zaz have like, like, things no, on his face? It's an interpretation of his madness. Oh. He's, 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 he's has his he cold serial killer eyes. I see. And uh, so it looks like he's wearing like a mask, or he has some kind of insane right, you know, but powers. It's just artistic but it, license. It's artistic license. It's Bray Fogle going Bray Fogle. I see. Okay. 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 Because they really extend. He wouldn't do yeah. that. He wouldn't look like that if Bray Fogel wasn't drawing it. Right. Oh, yeah. And uh, Chandra Kinsolving. Oh, yeah. Who was really interested in Bruce. Uh, then, you know, he's Batman's back is shattered. They, uh, Alfred and Tim come up with a really lame excuse of he crashed his uh, luxury car over an embankment. Uh, they do this by uh, smashing a car and then pushing it over an embankment. 
And then uh, they like invite Chandra, who is like both a psychiatrist and like a literal medical doctor, and uh, they ask her to be like his attending physician. And she's like, okay, well, we're gonna have to take him to a like, real hospital because. And they're like, no, 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 we bought like CAT scan machines and all those MRIs. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got everything you need right here. That's exactly right. She's, she's like, like, this is really weird. Why? I am so turned on right now. Like that's who she like. What? She's not like I'm horny for like people who are in trouble. It's just like she's she's it's like any excuse for how to fuck Batman. Oh, uh, Bruce Wayne. Maybe it's Bruce like Wayne. a yeah. a display of power. I guess. She's just like, oh wow, he bought all this stuff, he can do anything no, he wants. No, 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 she's, she, it's just that she wants Bruce, she'll just take any, she's like, whatever, as long as I get to be with Bruce. You know, wow. and Bruce is like, oh man, like I, like maybe I should tell her who I am. This new character? Yeah, and Alfred's like, please don't. Do don't. I would really rather if you didn't. Yeah, because I know that like she's gonna become a new Catwoman or something. Or <laughs> I, I I've had to disappear quite a few of your dates <laughs> <laughs> because you couldn't resist sharing your greatest secret with them. Uh, but yeah, uh, that, and that's what actually ends them. Uh, that uh, that's what actually brings him to Tim Drake's house because Chandra's there, like attending with Jack, and then the, bo the both of them are absconded. Oh, uh, so yeah, he's like he's like I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna tell her I uh, I'm Batman. Man, that's gonna be crazy. Wonder how she's gonna react. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> she's gone! <laughs> Nightfall. Nightfall. Yeah, it's gonna change Batman forever. I can't wait for Night Quest. Oh wait, yes I can. Like, Everyone remembers this part. Yeah. They kinda conveniently forget about the Night's Fall well, and, or Night's is, Quest and Night's End. This is Nightfall. No one thinks about the entire thing as being Nightfall. They think about this. Yeah. yeah. Well, but they think like, about the things, the seminal moments that happen. But like Bane is defeated. Yes. Like three issues after he beats Batman, like Bane's beaten by this friggin' yeah. other guy. And it's like, no, get him out of here. That's not the thing. No. He's just John the Paul's thing on the, the way to the thing. Yeah. And then Batman has to deal with John Paul, which is just a much bigger problem. It's like yes. a. It's like a the enemy within. Kind yes. Of thing. That's you true. let him in, right. Batman. You let him in the. The environment that's that true. you gave him the mantle, mm -hmm. you set him up, and that's you like trained him. Yeah, yeah, you trained exactly. I mean, barely. Well, you had Robin train him and <laughs> gave him access to all the computers and everything. Yeah. Like now, that that's a real well, problem. Like yeah, that's him. that is a real problem because the Gotham is starting to fall. People, are, you're destroying the reputation of Batman. Right. Yep. Batman itself. The idea of Batman's under threat. Yeah. Like Bane may have broken Batman, but Azrael slash Jean Paul may kill it. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like that's 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 kind of cool. That's a smart move, but I don't need two volumes for that. Well, yeah, it takes entirely too long. Yeah, um, but Six the idea longer. of like a Gotta big a whole other volume. Yeah, <laughs> a whole other volume. Four. Oof, it's already too much now. But uh, yeah, nightfall. Nightfall. Pick up a copy if you want. If you don't already own it, and we'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. Bane. I they were doing this weird thing with covers too, where like the the issue four ninety seven when Batman's broken, it has like this like paper flap over it, and it, it 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 brings you nothing to the table. Like it's they're just like I guess it's a gimmick, but it's inexpensive because it's cheap paper that goes over the cheap paper cover we gave. <laughs> like Nightfall, weird. Batman five hundred, they put money in there. It was mm -hmm. a gatefold glossy cover, mm -hmm. which is Batman. I'm not gonna spend money on four ninety seven. That's no. stupid. <laughs> Not when we're three issues away from for 500. <laughs> Double length. Hell yeah. It's in the back. Uh, that's the that's the newsstand cover. The cover cover is... Keep going. It, you've already 